Thoughts, the Cars Podcast. The Fanorama's number one source for news, reviews, and thoughts about the new wave rock legends, the Cars. Oh, and a little bit of uh, Sewell, Sunshine, and Rainbow. Welcome to Night Thoughts, the Cars Podcast, Episode 22, with Dave and Donna. Um, Dave, Mr. Steel Wool, joining me is my co-host, Miss Sunshine and Rainbows, Donna. How's it going, Donna? Hey, it's going good. Fantastic. <laughs> I think hey, you need to you need clarify. To excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. For excuse me for one second. What? Um, I podcast, you know, in the den. And um, I realized I, I haven't closed the door. Oh. So so my steel wellness won't trickle out into the family room. <laughs> <laughs> that blue smoke. Yeah, the blue, the blue smoke of steel wool. Yes. Let, let me close this door. This this would be a real treat for the listeners. All right. While you're gone, Dave, I'm going to tell... Hey, I'm walking over I, to the door. I'm going to tell the listeners that you're actually... You're not... Uh, I closed the door. <laughs> All right, now we're ready to roll. Are you? We are a professional podcast here, folks. We love it. We're good. Professional. Dave, Maybe I was going to... No, who just dinged? I didn't ding. It wasn't me. I did not ding. Let's turn off all dingers, people. Um, I'm not dinging. I was going to tell everybody that you're kind of masquerading as steel wool tonight, but I know you're yeah. not feeling very good. Well, you know, it happens. Yes. I'm I'm pretty proud of my non-sickness history. You know, uh, kids started going down like two weeks before Christmas, and um, I've stayed clear um, all the way until now. Okay. So well, I think good. that's pretty good. Good, good. Pretty good deal. All right. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about uh, <clears throat> in between our last podcast and this podcast, you know, um, our friend Dante. Yes. Dante Tomaselli. Yes. Uh, sent uh, me a copy of Witches. Yes. And it's well known that Dante's stuff scares the shit out of me. <laughs> yes. And but you know what? I was determined to give this album a listen, and I did. Okay. I listened to it on the way to school uh, many days in a row. <laughs> um, last week, this week is of course my Rick Fest, but uh, last week was 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 Dante Fest. Okay. And. You know, so, like, I'm going to school, and, you know, I got it cranked up, and I'm driving along, and it's it's just, it's amazing how these, I guess, soundscapes mm -hmm. can create visuals in your head and, and kind of warp your perceptions of reality. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? In other words, that was the most intense morning commutes of my life. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I swear there's houses I've passed every day for the past 20 years, and I'm convinced that some of them are haunted now, <laughs> just by looking at them and hearing the music, you know, and then, <laughs> and then you know, like, in, in certain cuts along there, you know, you kind of get that road rage feeling, you know, <laughs> it's, it's green, the light's green, you <laughs> demonic bastard, go, you know, but I love, oh, I love this. That's funny. Um, but, you know, just getting over the initial freak out, the, you yes. know, the first time I listened to it um, in, in subsequent uh, listenings, you know, just is it very cool to be, be able to visualize your own kind of personal stuff. And and um, I really love the voiceovers. Yes. Um, um, the atheist. Yes. And the devil. That, I mean, that's awesome. I wonder, I, I wonder who, if that's like... Um, audio from old footage, or if that's something that he created new. Well, have to ask him that. No, that is that's audio uh, from somebody. Um, I read a review of Witches, and the guy, the person who was reviewing it, named the person's voice who that is. Um, yes, that's something from the past. Really? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it sounds old, old yes. and creepy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told you the first time I listened to it, I was out running in the woods at twilight. So yeah, yes, I definitely know that creepy good, feeling. That's a, you had a worse case scenario than I did. <laughs> I mean, because I'm just driving to school. I don't know, morning oh, commute. The, Ugh, what a nightmare. Yeah. Well, you know. Music. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Let's get to the business. We got the business. Sorry. For all you people listening right now, you're listening on YouTube. 
go ahead and click that subscribe button. How many subscribers are we up to now, Donna? Uh, I think 39. We're 39. Wait, last time it was like 37. No, maybe 39 is me. I think we're 45. See, here, here's here's my my uh, thing on this. If you look and see how many people have listened to different episodes, I think I, I think our Team Rick, Team Ben episode's gotten the most listens, like 180 or whatever. We yeah. should have at least 180 subscribers. All right. Right. Come on. Right. You, the first time you listen to it, you're hooked. You don't want to yeah. miss an episode. So, I mean, it's like a little button. Just click the thing. Click it. Click it and subscribe. Piece of cake. There's, you know, you don't have to pay anything. It's free. Right. We won't even for, charge you. For free entertainment. Yeah. 40, 45 subscribers is what we're up to. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, we got 100, at least 140 to go. <laughs> you can uh, also follow us on Facebook. We have our Facebook.com backslash groups backslash Night Thoughts Podcast, our little Night Thoughts Podcast page. And send us an email at nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com. And, of course, merch, merch at tpublic.com backslash user backslash nightthoughts. Did we just sold a, a Night Thoughts shirt. Hey, nice. <laughs> was it you? Did you buy it? Yeah, it was, oh yeah, it was me. <laughs> We're the, I'm the only guy who's bought that. Who purchased a Night Thoughts t-shirt. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> this is my third. Did you get the um, the Turks Love the Cars shirt up there? No, I have not, I have not put up a Turks Love the Cars shirt. Because that will sprout wings, baby. That will fly yeah, off the shelf. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, I don't even think I'd buy myself a Turks Love the Cars shirt. Because then I would have to explain it to everybody. You could wear it as a jammy shirt. If, if, <laughs> if your wife will allow it. I don't have jammy shirts. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Crap. A jammy shirt. <laughs> Honey, you going to put on your jammy shirt? All you come right, to all it? right. Next piece of business. <laughs> That's it. That's all our business. That's no. All our business. I've got a whole list of business, Dave. Go for it. Well, can I just tell you, first of all, the biggest news of the week? Hello? What is Oh. David. The, the, fact, the fact that you got tickets to the Rock Hall. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's up there, but that's not what I was thinking. We can talk about that, but uh, I totally throw you threw me off. What? Wait. This, are you? Are, did you or did you not get tickets for the rock call? <clears throat> I got tickets for the. <laughs> Good. Sorry. I need representation. I am. Where, where are you? Where are you keeping this from me? Did Did we get our press passes, and you're not telling me? Uh, no, I don't know anything about press passes yet. The deadline for that is March fifth, so we won't hear about that for a while. But I'm so giddy. I I need to breathe. Okay. Yes, I I did get on the pre-sale, the member pre-sale. At yeah. Seven, so you should have gotten tickets. Seven o'clock. Well, I consider myself very lucky to have gotten tickets because you know if you read the chatter out there on Twitter and Facebook, um, you know there's a lot of. Uh, unhappy people who felt like they just totally got the shaft. But I got on there, and of course the first, you know, you, you say you want to buy tickets, and so it kind of searches for tickets. And the first ones that were coming up were like $300 ones, and I couldn't afford that. And um, I was trying to search for two tickets, because you could buy up to two tickets. Nothing, nothing, nothing in my price range. So then I changed it to one ticket, and then, I, you know, nothing, nothing. And I kept refreshing. And it, some days it'd say nothing available, nothing available. And then I'd refresh, and it was like, you know, one ticket, one of the $90 tickets. So I just immediately bought it. Well I, well, I tried for two again, actually, at that point. I was like, well, if there's one available, maybe I'll try for two. And then there was nothing, nothing. <sighs> and I totally thought, oh, my gosh, I just blew it. I gave away that ticket, and I blew it. And so then I went back to one, and I refresh, refresh, refresh. One ticket, boom, in the cart, bought insurance, send me one in the mail. Yes, everything. And then I was like, I can get two, though. Maybe I'll try to get another one. And so I got back on there, same thing. No, nothing, 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 $300 tickets, blah, blah, blah. Finally, one came up for 90 bucks in the cart, got it. And um, so I have two tickets. <laughs> so, wait, so now you have two tickets, and they're probably like on the opposite ends. Yeah, they're nowhere near each they're other. They're not I, together. Yeah, I, ha I had no clue <laughs> even where they were. But that's okay, because I, <laughs> so they, I, I was not planning to bring anyone with me, but so I did actually offer the ticket to a friend who I knew wanted to go and, and was not, uh, oh, that's did not nice. have a good chance. So I sold it 
for the same price I bought it for, I sold my ticket to uh, to another member of the Panorama. So, um, but I'm I, I'm going to need to bring Kleenex because, and binoculars and you know all sorts of stuff. I'm out with the bats up in the uh, far back corner of the the venue, but I don't care, Dave. I'm going to be in that room. I don't feel so bad now because if if a person who's a member of the the Rock Hall on the pre-sale had that much trouble getting tickets, then I don't feel so bad trying to get in on the public thing. Oh, it was brutal. Because, I mean, they were gone. Yeah, that's what I read, yeah. I mean, it... I mean, they were just gone. People It are... was like, hey, sorry. What? I just got on here. Yeah. <laughs> how can they, how can they go? <laughs> well, and some people, I understand that some people, were like, because I'm on Chrome is my, my browser, and so some people couldn't, they were like, Internet Explorer didn't work, but I got on Chrome and I was able to get tickets. You know, like, I think there was maybe some weird stuff going on, or I don't know what, but, oh, and then one gal got her ticket, had it in the cart, the, her web, the website froze up or something, Ticketmaster froze up, her ticket disappeared, and she couldn't get a ticket. Yeah. I mean, things like that that are just, people are just mad. Ticketmaster's the devil. Apparently. As a matter of fact, I think Dante's cut, the devil, <laughs> on witches, is actually about Ticketmaster. <laughs> Very well, maybe. <laughs> so, anyway. Yes, I have a ticket, and I am very, very grateful. I'm very, very thankful to have gotten one. I was totally weak in the knees. My heart was pounding. I couldn't believe it was in my cart. Even afterwards, I checked, like, do I really have this? Is it the right venue? Did I, you know, did I, <laughs> wouldn't it be? You've been this excited since you got tickets for the ice capades, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Stop. Disney on ice, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Um, anyway, I'm giddy, so yes. Well, great. Okay, but that's not the really the biggest news. That's big news. But that's not the biggest news, Dave. I can't believe okay. you're drawing a blank. Why? Are you talking about the new releases? Yes, the expanded editions have been well, announced. we knew those were coming. We knew those were coming. David, we, but didn't, we I didn't know I'm when. Staying, we did, well, no, we didn't know when. Uh, I am staying, staying spoiler-free on those. I see, not listening I to those. Because I, mean, I learned. I learned from... The Panorama Candy O, they'll release everything except maybe one cut. Yeah. And then when you get this album, you've got one cut to listen to that you haven't, you know. So I'm, I'm staying, staying away. Have yeah. I listened to the Drive that they put out? Nope. Nope. I have not. I listened to one of the little clips of it. I didn't listen to the whole thing, and that was plenty. Um, but you're right. I feel the same way because um, I'm essentially with Panorama. That's what I felt like. I, I paid for one song on that Panorama thing because everything else was available. Or I had already heard, so that's okay. Yep. I can't wait to see the artwork. I can't wait to see the sketch, the, um, the etchings. I can't wait to do an episode unboxing them. Um, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's always fun. Yes. Yeah, so for those of you who might not know, Shake It Up and Heartbeat City Expanded Editions are due out March 30th. You can pre-order them on Amazon. And, uh, Rhino. And, oh, and Rhino. Oh, oh. Don't forget our sponsor, Rhino. Our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. I'll cash the check, and then I'll they mention just, them. They just don't know it yet, oh, okay. but they are our sponsor, <laughs> Rhino Records. Um, so, yes, expanded editions are out. Um, and, yes, as you said, the Drive demo is actually up on YouTube. People want to watch it or listen to it, I guess I should say. Uh, and then... Uh, what was my other? Oh, I already told you I got the Substitution Mass Confusion CD, so I'm excited to write about that in the near future. Oh, here's the other thing I was going to tell you. I remember when we did the quiz episode, and we were talking about whatever the question was about platinum albums, and how the many boots. Well, the boots are awesome. How many <laughs> records you had to sell to be considered platinum? Yes. And I don't even. Yeah. I don't remember what my answer was. What was my answer? Six million or? Two million. Uh, three know. million, I think, or two million. <laughs> something. I don't know. Well, I came across something else. I So I just need to um, just confess to the public, the, the large, large body of people who are listening right now, I'm sure. I <sighs> am an idiot, and I don't know everything. And um, I really thought whatever I said on the podcast at that time was the amount you had to sell. But it's a million. You have to sell one million dollars in the United States. I mean, one million records in the United States to be considered platinum. It just doesn't seem like very much. No, a million's a lot. I know, but somehow it just doesn't seem like very much to me. I don't know why. Mm. Maybe because I thought it was six million. So, you know, now I'm like, oh, is that all? 
Do not know. Uh, anyway, so yes, so I am just correcting my what I said before. Uh, to reach platinum sales, you have to have sold a million records, five hundred thousand for gold, in the United States. Huh. So there you have All it. Right. So sorry about that, people. Here we go. Hope nobody banked All on right. that for any reason. All right, so <clears throat> tonight, episode twenty-two. Our 22nd episode, 22 times I've actually had a long discussion with uh, Donna Sweet Purple June. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, man. It really That's kind a, of is, isn't it? That's, so That's a lot of discussions. <laughs> Although our early ones were rather short, but you know. I was totally thinking, could you imagine if we still were limited to half an hour? <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> you know what? We can't even make it through the business in a half hour. <laughs> I know. We've already been recording for what? How long? I don't yeah. even know. At least, at least 15, 15 minutes. Yeah, we 16 got minutes. The business. Yeah. I'm going to get hate mail about that. I've, I've already heard about that. So we better really? move on. Yeah. All right. All right. So let, let the stories be told is our episode title this week. And um, I think you want to give a little introduction to our special guest that we have. I do. We have a very special guest. And in honor of that special guest. If he's not asleep yet. I, I know. He took off. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I told you, man. Sorry, I told you I was yeah. hyper. Um, yeah. So usually every Friday I wear my Night Thoughts podcast T-shirt, and most of the time I wear my car shoes to get in the in the groove of being on the podcast. But tonight I am wearing a very special limited edition shirt. We don't even sell on T Public. That's how special this shirt is. I'm wearing my. Benjamin Orr memorial shirt designed by our very special guest. Please welcome Mr. Kurt Gaber. Yay! Hello. Hi, Kurt. How are you guys? <laughs> Windy. Long, long winded. <laughs> oh, it's all good. So, uh, <laughs> sunshine and rainbows yes. and steel wool. I'm talking to him in the flesh. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Or at least but I, got, I, got, I got one for you. Yeah, I got one for you. I got one. I got one for my own now. I'm uh, Mr. Rubbing Compound. Mr. Rubbing Compound. <laughs> yeah. I like oh. to po polish things and make to them fine. To your mind. To your mind. We're not that kind of show, Kurt. <laughs> polish things and make them fine, right? We need that on this show. Let me tell you. This okay. uh, somehow this reminds me of the "You Are the Girl" video. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Pop the knob right off that thing. Oh, it's just... all right, all right. Well, okay. Here's, here's to you, blush. Dave. Now, what happens if you rub too hard with the uh, with, uh, polishing compound? I don't know. Afraid to find you burn it. through the paint. Burn through the paint, that's all. <laughs> burn through the paint. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Yes, we, then you better take it easy tonight, Kurt. We need a okay, soft we'll touch, do. buddy. Soft touch. <laughs> yep, will do. No, no, no. You go for it, Kurt, because by golly, if there's anything I want, I want people to hate you more than me, just for once. Yeah. It's a tall order, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, I, want, I want messages on Facebook going to Donna about that Kurt. That Kurt, he's so, he's so intensive. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. Kurt's a nice guy. Kurt, we're so glad yeah. you're here. I'm so glad you joined us. You I'm got, really glad. You got tickets for the Rock Hall, yeah? Yeah, it was uh, similar to your story, too, because when I called in, uh, it was very nerve-wracking. Um, or not calling, but I logged in because I, I wasn't quite set to go. I mean, I didn't realize you had to have that uh, um, code. The code, And yeah. you told me you opt in to get the emails, and I, I didn't want the junk mail, so I didn't opt in. And then all of a sudden, here it happens, and I had... Um, no code so i was all set to go and i had to scramble to call called the 800 number of course it was busy and my uh, one of my employees saw another work number she said call this one so i, I called that and it was, i couldn't believe i got through and they said oh it looks like you've opted out of the email uh. so she actually was able to give me the code over the phone and then uh I was able to punch it in, and I typed it in like four or five times. It wouldn't accept it. said it was wrong. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to get tickets. Well, when I finally got in, it was the same thing, Donna, where all the um, – I was just trying to get two right off the bat, and yeah. the, the cheap ones were sold, and I moved up to the next level, and, and I tried there, and it's like, they're not available, and all of a sudden, I'm at 
three hundred dollars a ticket, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's what I, I ended up getting them, and I, I was shocked and surprised that it worked. And I did the same thing, got the insurance, and then um, it was it was a done deal. So I I was surprised. It was a lot of money, but it was worth it. I knew I was going to do whatever it took to get the ticket. So once in a lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. The three hundred dollar ticket, you get to sit on Rick Ocasek's lap. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, you know, I looked, I didn't even look on the stadium map. I know Donna probably knows exactly what seat she's in. I saw something that said second balcony, and that's where I'm at. I thought, you know what, I'm in. I don't care where I'm at, I'm in. So I didn't even look at, yeah, I didn't look at anything about the seating. As soon as the ticket came up and I decided to get it, I just put it in the car. I mean, like, I checked out as fast as I could. And then yep. afterwards, I was like, oh, I wonder where I'm sitting. Not like I cared, you know, really, but yeah. I'm way, you're probably right on the nice on the sides there. I'm way in the back yeah. corner. Hard to say, you know. It doesn't matter. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, God knows where you're sitting at. It, uh, you got to watch. That can be really sketchy, you know. <laughs> so, you know be behind a pole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah I felt you know, like. You know what's kind of neat about that? I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Donna. What's kind of cool is I've, I've been lucky enough to be in touch with Diane Page a little bit here and there. And especially, you know, years ago when I when I uh, kind of had my second wind of the cars, like 2008, and I actually got home tonight, ate dinner with my wife, and I got an email just before I came up here, and all of a sudden it was from her. And she said, did you get tickets? That's all it said, you know. I thought that was really cool that she was concerned whether I got tickets or not, you know. Yeah, that's nice. So Yeah, so I answered it back and told the story, and, and I haven't checked my email since because I've been, you know, waiting here. But uh, that was really cool that she was concerned enough to see if I did get them because we're going to try and get to meet her there when, when we go. So, Wow, oh, very nice. Cool. I thought maybe she yeah. was asking because she wants to get them from you because she's like, I didn't, oh. I didn't oh. get any, so can I have yours? Well, can I have yours? You, you never know <laughs> because by I, the I way, the rest of the email. Yeah. <laughs> I have some polishing compound in my car. <laughs> can you give me yeah, some that's... tips? Yeah, really. Yeah. It is really nice. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, Kurt, why don't you um, take yourself back to uh, whenever it was um, in your younger days and kind of give us uh, an introduction of, of how you came upon the cars in your life. Okay. I guess, you know, my, my first memory of that is about eh, 1978, 79, I guess. Um, I was probably a freshman in high school. And... We were going to track meets, and uh, back then the boom boxes were big, so yeah. everybody had a giant boom box, you know, and cranked the tunes at the track meet on the bus, and the cars was just popular big time. And as it turns out, this uh, upperclassman by the name of Scott uh, was into the cars, loved the cars, and he played guitars and was in band and all this, and he always had the cars cranking. It was just kind of cool. And... As it turns out, he, he ended up uh, marrying my my sister-in-law. So he's now my brother-in-law. So, I mean, ah. we were from town, and uh, it's kind of cool that, you know, we've known each other this long and, and have this, you know, affection for guitars and that music. So that's kind of a neat connection I've had. So early on, that was that was it at track meets and going to, uh, you know, these meets and listening to the cars was just a, a big thing because they were, you know, very popular. And I was always like a sound effects kind of fan and you know with that that uh, title of new wave mm -hmm. that was my style of music you know i mean acdc i'm like i'm not listening to that stuff i didn't like it at all <laughs> which ironically i do now i really do like it you know it took 15 years to to develop that music taste but i always liked synthesizers and gary newman and the cars and the police and and that's kind of what really started is is that new sound you know nice and I think that, you know, when I, I look back on listening to music and headphones, because I would always have my records plugged in, laying on the floor at my parents' house, and just <laughs> listening to headphones and looking at the albums. You're just reading the stuff and, and looking at that. And I just loved hearing all those synthesizer sounds. And even now when I think about it, um, there's this whole blend of who was singing what, where people don't understand who was Rick and who was Ben when they're singing. Mm -hmm. And even at the time, I, I don't think I paid attention to enough of that as well. Sometimes you had to think about it, you know. And now when you look at it, it's so obvious who's singing. Yeah. But a lot of people say to me, even nowadays, if I'm wearing my Ben Orr shirt, oh, yeah, 
you know, Rick sings this and Rick does that. And, and you have to educate them as to who, who is singing what, you know? Yes. So that's, that's kind of where it all started. And, and even uh, you may have seen pictures I posted on Facebook here and there of, of uh, shirts I used to make. I used to hand make these <laughs> t-shirts. Yeah, those are awesome. Cards, you know, and what it was is you take a, like an embroidery hoop with a, like a metal pan, you, you put that on there and you stretch your shirt over it. And then, well, first you draw out what you want and you um, use a transfer pencil on the back side of it. Then you iron it on so that you have a, a pattern to kind of fill in. So I would just fill it in with these little tubes of Artex paint. Well, it's like a fine point pen. So it would take you hours <laughs> to do a shirt, you know, hours and hours to fill in these letters. You just screw it on there and keep going and let it dry. And then they would just, they were, you know, really uh, washable and wearable, you know, for a long time. Nice. And uh, so I made, you know, a car shirt for myself, one for my buddy, and, and then a couple other ones. And and uh, that was that was the beginning of it all. That's totally you know, my, cool. my, uh, my older brother... Um, decided to make an Eagles shirt for me when I was, I think, about in seventh grade. And um, I decided I wanted the Eagles logo on the back of my King Kong shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how those go together, but he, he decided he's going to, you know, put the Eagles little arc on, on my back, and he did it with, with a, a Sharpie, permanent oh, marker. Yeah. Laundry marker, which bled through, <laughs> and then I had like like a little dots and spots and stuff on my back for what at least a week, because <laughs> maybe longer because I didn't wash as much then, and uh, <laughs> it's not the way to do it, folks. <laughs> you know, so, as far as uh, I, I don't know if, if this is, uh, I guess it's pertinent as well. Even thinking about that kind of music and listening to that and really liking the cars back then. Um, we were in a really small town. I mean, it was a town, our, our, my graduating class is 44 people and our high school had 192 people in it, you know, so we weren't really exposed to a lot of things in, in near a lot of big cities, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as like, I, when I listened to, to, to you guys and to Donna and Dave and, and just see, you know, other fans along the way, I always thought I was this super fan, but I'm probably not as high up on the ladder as I thought I once was when you see what these, you know, people um, have seen and done with the cars. But um, I felt like I was a, a, a super dedicated fan and, and listened to all their stuff and, and got the solo albums, you know, as they came along and uh, kind of through about... I don't know, late 90s, early 2000s, I still heard Rick's solo stuff and like that. And then they just weren't on my radar as much, you know. And, and that's where I think in one of the past episodes, I just listened to one actually yesterday where you guys talked about um, Alpine Valley. Dave, you had gone to see him there. Yeah. Well, I, I listened to that and I thought, well, I, I wish I could say I was there, but I didn't because I, I just wasn't in touch that much, you know. Mm. And the one opportunity I had that I blew, and I really still regret to this day, is my brother knew I was a huge Cars fan, and he wanted to know if I if I would go to this concert because he was in Texas at the time working down there because he bought tickets. I'm like, holy man, you got tickets to the Cars? He's like, yeah, and he knew that I was a huge fan. Well, Nat and I were in uh, Appleton at the time. I had my first job. I had only been working for a few months. I was 19. And uh, I, I didn't have the money, didn't have the vacation time. And I'm like, Tom, I, I just can't. I can't, you know, fly to Texas. I can't drive to Texas. And I had to pass. And it just killed me to do that. So he was able to go and see him, you know, went with his wife and, and saw the cars. And, and I never did, oh. you know, when it was the full bunch. I mean, later I, I did see him in, in 2011, you know, uh, when they were in Minneapolis with Old Ben. But uh, that was one opportunity I really look back on and, and, and wish I could have done, you know. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Like, you know, I told the story before, but they're in my own town in 79, Candy O Tour. Yeah. Where the hell I was, what the <laughs> hell I was thinking, I have no idea. Yeah. But it, you know, it kills me to know that they were here. They're in my town. They're like, you know, not l less than like five blocks from where wow. I'm sitting right now. And, yeah. and I, had, I had no clue they're in town. Wow. No clue. Well, here's mine. I I didn't even I liked the, the cars okay but I wasn't ever a really big fan of recently so I wouldn't it would not have been on my radar anyway but Ken and I went to Vermont in 1995 
um, <clears throat> and were near where Benjamin lived and had no clue. And there's a chance that he was playing out at that time. Like in my mind, I just think there there was probably there might have been a chance where I could have seen him and I had no clue. You know, when he, yep. he was that he was just starting to get back into back on the stage, and I just think. Well, I wonder how close I came to getting to see him or, or even just being in the same vicinity as him and had no clue, no idea. I didn't, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have recognized him if I saw him. I kind of I had the same thing happen a little bit with um, the, when he was doing the Orr Band, he performed in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, Two Rivers, Two Waters, I think Two Rivers, mm -hmm. uh, like 97, 98, and I kind of learned that through uh, Vin Kalicious. And uh, I thought the same thing, you know, here I am, you know, just a few hours away. But I, again, I was just so disconnected. I didn't realize that, you know, yeah. I mean, my sec second wind of the cars came along quite a bit after 2000. Because, you know, when Ben died, I remember having that. Uh, I, don't, I wonder who designed this, Dave. You might know this. It was a really cool, like, trilogy picture of him. It was like a blue background. And it just said, you know, Benjamin Orr, 1947 to 2000. And uh, it was just really great photos. I think there were a couple Phil Kamen photos in there. And I had that as my screensaver for months, you know, and I just was shocked that he had passed away. And then there was this, again, this this long spell when they came around to uh, Rockfest as the new cars with your buddy Todd at the helm. <laughs> um, then that was the beginning of a lot of things I can talk about tonight is this whole second second wave, you know, my second wind all started when they came to town because they, they were only 25 minutes from where I live. And I thought, well, I got to check this out, you know, and that just looking for information about the new cars completely flipped my lid on this thing. Again, I, I just went all in on the cars and it's just been a, a huge, huge thing for me for the last 10 years. Nice. Nice. So, yeah. So, so eventually, you you made your way to Facebook, and yeah. I, I know I know the first um, time that I think I you know crossed paths with with your name was with the the Benjamin Orr uh, memorial shirts that that Donna is wearing right now. Um, yeah. And I I can about what year was that? Uh, Twenty twelve, I think, was the first time we did an order. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I. I I, I know you were cordial enough just to take uh, uh, orders from people and have people send checks into you. I think I ordered my first one from you just by sending you a, a check or yep. and and going that route. And of course, I, I gave that one away. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I, I give things away. Dave gives and, everything and away. Then I've gotten I've gotten another one, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> Luckily. But yeah, how did that how did that come about, Kurt? The whole the whole Benjamin Orr shirt thing. Well, let's see. If I think back about what was going on there, um, I I guess about 2008 or so, 2007, I designed a logo for another group, you know, and I thought, well, I mean, I, I kind of was nervous about using anything with the name or, you know, trademark issues or anything like that. But I thought, well, I mean, it's kind of a, a thing where it's um, – Remembering, you know, remembering him in a, in a good way. It's and I'm not trying to make money off the things that thought I designed this logo. That was kind of a cool first step, you know, to be a little bit connected to the cars again. And then, you know, having made my own T-shirts back in the day, you know, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. I just, I think, through looking at all these um, pictures and on Facebook of people, you know, wanting these old shirts and things like that. Well, they're not available, you know. I mean, there's the cars aren't marketing them. So I thought if I put something together and there was an interest in it, it would be kind of cool. And it was just more of a, I wanted to do one for myself for sure. And if I wanted to buy in, that's cool. I thought if I do a dozen shirts, you know, that'd be great. And through another kind of mutual Facebook friend, my friend Pam um, was really a big Cars fan and just was all on board to kind of help with this. So she said, well, I'll, I'll kind of set some stuff up and take orders and get sizes and, and you do the design and and she was a big help in getting the first one together. And I think I said I'd like to get like a, a dozen shirts, just cover the cost, you know. And, man, I got to think that first order was probably three dozen shirts, you know. Yeah. And then, um, again, I was a little nervous about, you know, whether I should do this. And I didn't want people to have this impression I was doing it to make money because I just wasn't, you know. I mean, I want to just get them in the hands of, of the fans. And, and that was the fun part is for people to take pictures and post them mm -hmm. and, you know, send me pictures and say thank you. And and uh, even 
sending them to Japan, to Yukio, you know, our, our big cars fan from Japan. It was so neat to be able to send one to her and, you know, how appreciative she is about everything. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun to be able to do that. And then that opened a little can of worms, too, because then people were like, well, hey, can you send one to here? Or can you send one to, and all of a sudden it was to Italy and everywhere. And some of these Shipping. shirts would have, would have, yeah, would have cost $100, where Italy won't accept textiles. So I just thought, boy, I can't, I can't do the international stuff. I'll just do it local, you know? Yeah. But that, that was the introduction to it. And then I think I've done probably about three or four more reorders of the same shirt. Um, and and tiptoeing carefully here, um, I actually was able to send one to uh, young Ben's mother and to young Ben. You know, I just thought I'm going to do this. So wow. I was able to get in touch with her and was real careful to, to respect her and, you know, her privacy but did that just because I thought it'd be a neat thing to do and kind of said, is this okay? And they gave me the blessing. So I felt really good about that. Then I, I felt like I wasn't offending anybody by doing that, you know. Is it authorized, became kind of an authorized project at that point then? Even though it wasn't written as such, I, I had their, their verbal go just through messaging, in messaging and I yeah. just thought that was really cool. So that made me feel better about it. That's really neat. Yeah, very cool. And at what, what point in time did you do the, the car's... Um, logo stickers we well, did that for our, our friend we don't want to mention but um. yeah it was probably a couple of years after maybe 20 2012 2013 somewhere in there yeah because yeah. he was requesting you know that we do that so that was the same same deal put it together and and i said yeah. as long as it's going to you you know and and you've got approval then that's yeah. that's what we'll do so and 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 to not to be uh to to defend the guy <laughs> but i will say i mean he did send them to people he would just send them to people at least he just sent it to me i didn't ask yeah. for any money or anything and and you know good good quality sticker it's still on my car yeah that's and, cool um hasn't faded you know you know how it goes is that the little yeah. record yeah yeah oh, i love yeah. yeah yeah i remember our our buddy chad i won't use last names but our buddy chad put his on his base which yeah. is really cool <laughs> um Chad's got an awesome heartbeat uh, city tattoo. Oh wow. wow! I don't know if Chad listens, but he yeah. does have an awesome heartbeat city <laughs> tattoo. Yeah, those those stickers were pretty cool. And then, of course, you've done the stickers for um, for for Benjamin too. Right, and nice. even with those, I, I yeah, I kind of did the same thing where nobody really knew it, and I didn't advertise it, but I always would stick at least a sticker or so inside the sweatshirt. So anyone that would get one always got a sticker too, you know, because it's it's again, I'm not doing it to make money, and I, I've got probably a folder full of those too because every time i've got a little free space on my printer if i'm doing a big job i got a little extra area there i'll just pop in benjamin Orr stickers and, and, and send it. them in the mail randomly you know oh yeah. so that's, okay. that's, cool. that's awesome i love it yeah right that's cool. how you and i met was through these shirts because i think the yeah. last run that you did um well because people i saw a photo of someone wearing the shirt and i was like of course i gotta get my hands on that and um so then i was asking around and you know people said oh it's kurt and he doesn't, you know, just does them every once in a while. So then um, getting in touch with you and saying, hey, if you want to do this, I'll help you organize it. And so then um, you and I worked together on the last print run and got those all out. And um, that's how you and I met. And I think that's really cool. Which was much appreciated, too. It was the same way where it's nice to be able to have that extra set of hands to help do that thing, you know, because... Uh, it, it's it's a fair amount of work to do it, you know, when yeah, you think about consuming. sizing, okay, I got to do this size, and can you do this, and is there a women's cut available, and all these, there's a lot of questions, you know, mm -hmm. try and keep it as simple as I can, well, but yeah, that was very helpful. And trying to add, once you decided, okay, yeah, I'm going to do another run, then, you know, getting, them in, getting the notices out to all the groups, and letting as many people be aware of it as possible, and that kind of a thing, um, just takes time, which, you know, you're yeah. a busy guy. Yeah, okay, people people don't understand that doing shirt orders is is just a major pain. I, I do it with my school. I mean, just doing it for the faculty is bad enough. <laughs> yeah. But when you do the school wide kind of thing, oh my gosh. Yes, yeah. it's, it's it's a lot of work. Here's a question for you, Donna. Okay. So when when you say you're wearing your limited edition shirt, are you wearing the limited edition shirt or the sweatshirt? I'm wearing my t-shirt. Oh, okay. I, but I do have a hoodie. Where'd you get that? Do you want me to say? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it, so when after I helped Kurt with that 
run, getting all those orders and stuff, and I ordered my own shirt, of course, he surprised me by not only sending me the shirt that I ordered, but also putting in a hoodie sweatshirt, a really nice, thick, awesome Benjamin Orr hoodie sweatshirt, which I love. So, Good. yes, I wear it often. I've me got too. you beat. I've got you beat, What? Donna. What? When Kurt <laughs> sent me the last uh, T-shirt that I got, tucked inside my shirt was a pair of tidy whities <laughs> that had... Polish compound on them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're soft, and they're comfortable, and they're heavy. Okay, well, you win, Just but I still that. enjoy my... My sweatshirt. So yes. Well, that's why I wasn't sure, Kurt, because at the time you were, you know, you were like, you know, I didn't need to make a big deal of it to anybody. So I never, I never mentioned it to anybody, but I love it. Yeah, and you didn't, and that's cool because that's how you develop a trust friendship too. Because like, you know, you don't know what people are like, and then you learn that stuff, you know. So yeah. I was glad to send it. Yeah, I love it. Good. <laughs> you know, Kurt, you bring up the fact about just making shirts. And and the, the the fear of you know copyright and all that kind of stuff, you know that's <clears throat> kind of where I came from with um, making my own shirts. I mean, you, you you could you could never find stuff even when the the cars were big. Um, you know, maybe in a head shop or something like that, you'd find find something. But you know, it was it was just tough. And then you know when you get into the the late nineties and early two thousands, you definitely couldn't find anything. And I just kind of resorted to, to making my own shirts all the time. And, um, you know, probably out of all the, the car shirts that I have, I think I have two that are licensed. Yeah. And that would be from the move like this tour. The rest of them I've, I've made, yep. um, you know, it's just, it's what you do. That's cool. Now, Kurt, do you want to, the shirt that you made, it has, we can, I'll, I've got pictures I can post um, if we need to, or, or anybody who's listening who has a shirt, please feel free to post a picture of your shirt. Um, it's got the little Benjamin Orr logo on the front, and then on the back, it has a really cool image of Benjamin. Do you want to talk about that containing yeah. the image and doing that? Yep. When I... Um, I want to be able to get permission, of course, when I did this, you know, using the photo. So I got in touch with Phil Kamen. And uh, at the time, I had the, the book, the Kamen and Goddard book, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the, the image was split in, in two pages. So there's a crack running down the middle. Well, you're going to kind of like work <laughs> off this artwork, you know. <laughs> That's so like, my underwear is. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Not going to exactly. polish that out, are you? No. So... <laughs> So I'm like trying to get this guitar, you know, uh, copied over as best I could. And I think I think there's even an issue with the headstock versus the body and the guitar because somebody called me out. Well, I'm, I'm not a guitar specialist. You know, I'm just didn't know anything about guitars. So mm -hmm. I, I try to do it as accurate as I can. I, I've been kind of ridiculed a little bit from some real guitar uh, experts on that. But <laughs> anyway, I got Phil's blessing and, and, and actually put it right on the shirt as well. And then which leads uh, to a little bit of a story that's connected. You know, later on, I was able to actually to, to um, buy some photos from him. Um, he had them through an auction house. So I, I, I bought like I had 100 photos, negatives, slides, a lot of them that were in these books with wow. a few unreleased, books, you know, with the copyright from him and, you know, with his blessing to do what I please. So then here I got the exact photo completely clean. And I think if you'll notice on the first run of shirts I did, it was kind of a, um, yeah, a little less detail when I re redid like a second or third run I added more detail and really made it better because I had better artwork to go from you know nice. so it's kind of improved that second version you know but yeah I was I was thrilled to get that from you know Phil I mean I bought the photos from him and the uh, again the, the copyright to go with him and I've, I've kept them pretty quiet just kind of you know respect wise and you know not going to do anything goofy with them but it's fun to have but it's it's kind of uh when i first got them i mean i, I couldn't believe it because i i opened up the package and here are all these slides that you see in the book full color i mean they, they it tells crop percentages and this one goes on this page and you know it's got name okasic and this one okasic whatever you know or here and, and uh it's just so neat to think that this is the the blueprints 
and the groundwork for this book, you know, that I, I looked at and, and loved, you know. That's crazy. So, yeah, ownership of those was was a, a huge deal for me and, and kind of fun to have these. But on one hand, it's like, how do you share these because of all the stuff that goes on with Facebook and people copying pictures and grabbing stuff? I mean, a lot of these are already out there. But to have the originals crystal clear on slides, if I show a slideshow, I mean, you know, my wife and I, your kids have seen the slideshow. They're just beautiful because they're giant full color photos, you know? Wow. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's again, a, a real neat connection to be able to have with Phil. And, and I've always uh, reached out and let him know that I appreciated all that, that he's allowed me to do with these, you know? So. That's crazy. That's so awesome. That makes my fingers like tingly. Like I want to get my hands on those carts. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> tingly hands. Yes, we got tingly fingers. Wow, wow, yeah. very cool. I was just kind of envisioning um, me and you, Donna, going going to Kurt's house, dead of winter. He he meets us at the door with a big mug of hot chocolate, <laughs> sits us down, bowl of popcorn, and shows us a slideshow of Bill oh, Cameron photos. Be that would be, be awesome. Blast. I do it. <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> Tell you what, I give you a snowmobile ride too. We got a stable full of snowbills up here, and we've been doing a lot of riding over here. So I'd invite you guys to come over. That'd be a blast. Awesome. I would kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would end up, I'd hit a tree. Yeah. No <laughs> well, I got a two up sled so Don could drive and you could ride in the back. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Hang on, Dave. You better hang yeah. on. Awesome. And so, Kurt, one more thing about the shirts. Um, you were able to also give a shirt to was it Barry Goudreau Who? yeah yeah Tell um, about the, that. well the connection there was um, through Dave Tedeschi which was Ben's tour manager for years I got to know Dave um, back around 2007 um, he told me that they uh, recorded some stuff together when they were doing the, the unreleased stuff right you know and um, Barry played uh, slide guitar on Send Me, I believe. Yes. And at the time, I didn't have these pictures, but David told me about it. Well, a few years later, I, I got some pictures from Dave, and it was of Ben's guitar in the studio where they were recording these songs. And there was Barry Goudreau um, at the mixing board, and the guitar was next to him. Um, and I, I kind of lost my train of thought for a second, but... Hi. oh. So, so what I did is I thought, well, would that ever be cool to be able to have these signed by Barry because he knew Ben, you know? Right. And I, through Facebook, I mean, back in the early days, uh, it was accessible because I think people were so new to it. Um, I just said, hey, if I send these out, can you sign me? He said, absolutely. So I sent these pictures out, and he autographed the pictures and said, you know, here's me, here's Ben, here's my better side. It's kind of, you know, shown from the back. And, and he hit, made these notes in there and signed them, and he sent them back to me. Wow. And I just thought that was so cool that he did that. Well, I think about two or three years ago, they had a Brad Delp Foundation fundraiser in, in Minneapolis. And I thought, I'm going to that, you know. I um, wanted to go. So I, I made a sign that I painted, you know, hand-painted it in memory of Brad Delp and, and paid some money as well. And then brought this so they could auction that sign off. And then I brought a couple shirts. Because I thought, well, maybe I can meet Barry, you know. And I went there with my, my brother-in-law, Scott. And uh, sure as heck, here comes Barry, you know, walking down off the where these guys are having their VIP stuff. And we're all, you know, eating together. I, I think I bought VIP passes. And I, I brought a shirt for him. And just it was just so strange. He walked up, hey, Barry, it's Kurt. And he, he shook my hand. And. I asked if he'd mind taking a picture. Absolutely. So I gave him a Ben Orr shirt. And then the, um, you know, we I didn't bug him because I didn't want to bother him, but it was just cool to do that little bit. Yeah. And then the guy that was emceeing the show, his name was Mike. I got in touch with him early on when I was going to uh, donate this sign, you know, for, in memory of Brad Delp. And when I saw him, I, I brought an extra shirt just to give him. Uh -huh. And I thought, you know, okay, thanks a lot. Well, he, he took his shirt off and put that Ben Orr shirt on right, that, right there. <laughs> he right before the concert, wow. because that was awesome. So he goes up on stage and he's wearing this Ben Orr shirt, you know. <laughs> so that was really cool to, to meet uh, Barry that night and you know talk to him, give him a shirt, and then uh, to you know to see Mike put put a Ben Orr shirt on his back too. That was that was just a thrill. So great! So, yeah. I remember seeing pictures from that. I think yeah. that, I think that was like two years ago. Yeah, maybe last year. Yeah. It wasn't last year, so the year before. I just, I totally remember that. Yeah. And this whole thing, again, you know, I mean, Facebook can be a little slippery slope, but um, 
I think initially when it was so new to even the members of the cars, they were accessible at first. And then all of a sudden that kind of, it went away, you know, yeah. but you know, I, I wouldn't have seen this if it wasn't for, for, for Brad Delp's ex-wife, you know, she posts on Facebook and I follow her and, and uh, she said this fundraiser is going on. I thought, well, what a great thing. So I went to it, you know, and I, I, same thing. I met her there, you know, and got to talk to her and, and, uh, you know, showed her the sign that I made. So it's just kind of fun to, to, to have this connection so much later, you know, cause Ben and Brad performed on stage together in the nineties too, you know? So it's just the whole thing started because of this second wind of my car's fandom, you know? I love it. So it put a lot of doors for me. Yeah, that's pretty great. So tell us, tell us more about um, and dealings with uh, Dave Tedeschi. Well, Dave is a guy that was a, a really good friend of Ben. Uh, they were they were buddies for a long time, and, and um, I think he knew Ben, you know, well before the cars were together. Yeah, and they knew of him along the way, and then when the cars split, well, him and Ben got together and decided to start doing music. And, um, you know, he knew of Ben's talents and, and they, they knew a lot of guys from the Boston music scene that got together and, and he, he called himself, you know, Ben's best friend and tour manager. And that's kind of how I relate to him. And the reason I got to know him was because after I designed that logo for the, this Ben Orr tribute group, uh, it was a Yahoo group, his, one of his guitars came up for sale. And I thought, well, would that ever be cool to get, you know? And I'd never played a guitar in my life, but I thought to have it. So I, I, I saw it advertised and they, you know, he, it was just, I still have the, the whole email and the page print out about what they said and, you know, why it's available. And, and they, he wanted to go to somebody that was a fan, not to just sell it on eBay, you know. And um, I, I asked my wife, is this up? You, you mind if I do it? She's like, well, go for it. Well, when she gave me that green light, I couldn't have done it any faster. <laughs> you know? But. But then I, I, I kind of approached it carefully because I thought, well, I mean, who, who is he? You know, I didn't know who he was. I wanted to know more about him. So I, I started digging around and made some calls and talked to the guy that had the guitar out in Boston for sale at, you know, Crossroads Music and, um, you know, did a lot of research to, to really prove. And I even said to Dave, well, how do I know who you are and what's your connection? Well, he sent me a lot of stuff. He, I think he faxed me about 10 or 12 pages of different things showing who he was. And I learned in a hurry, you know, I mean, he sent contracts with, you know, money amounts and places they played and Ben's personal cell phone numbers, all these things. And I just thought, I can't believe I have this stuff in my hands, you know, but I knew that I had to be very respectful of all of that. And, and probably something I really haven't told a lot of people, but it's not like it's a secret, but when, when I talked to him, he was very emotional. I mean, in one phone call, he, he actually hung up because he was crying. You know, I, I felt really bad. And, um, you know, they were very, very good friends, close friends. And, and Ben's death was only, you know, six, seven years before that. Mm -hmm. So I think it was really, really hard for him to let this go. I think there was some, you know, financial situation maybe that, that could have led to, you know, why he had to get rid of it. And um, it just kind of really made me respect what was going on and, and, and I really wanted to make sure he knew <clears throat> that this was going to, you know, to a good home and a safe place. And and one thing he said when I talked to him on the phone a couple of times, you know, what are you going to do with it? Well, I said, I'm going to build a case and put it in storage. He said, well, what are you going to do that for? He says, it's just way too nice to play it, you know, or to to, uh, to, to not do something with it. He goes, you got to learn to play it. I'm like, well, I've never played a guitar in my life. So I started taking guitar lessons and took lessons for, you know, three or four or five years and uh, got to be okay at it. I call myself more of a guitar owner than a player. <laughs> that, that, that guitar purchase is, is what really started my second wind. I mean, to, to have that thing arrive in the mail and open it and see it, and, and he sent the pictures long, you know, of Ben playing it, and then even later he sent more pictures that are, to this day I haven't released, just out of respect to Don Marie and, and to Dave beautiful photos of him on stage playing the thing in the 90s and it, 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 I, I couldn't believe I had it wow. when I go to guitar lessons my instructors they, they would play this Les Paul and they're like that's the most beautiful guitar I've ever played I mean I had a nicer guitar than most of my guitar instructors had you know they had beaters <laughs> here I start with this Cadillac and I'm a hack you know <laughs> so it, it and then it just it developed the friendship I mean over time 
Um, you know, we talked on the phone, sent emails back and forth. He had a limousine business um, that he needed decals for, so I made stickers and sent stickers out to him. I mean, I never charged him, you know. And and on the phone, he was the neatest guy to talk to because he could remember things down to minute details that you just couldn't believe. He would say names and places and years, and it was so clear to him on, on you know, when they played, and, and the names would just drop like you couldn't believe. It. And I would be scribbling the stuff down. You know, I still have notes <laughs> of what they tell me. Yeah. And it was yeah. a great connection. And when, when he passed away, you know, I, I – I felt like I wish I would have asked him so much more because he had so much to share, you know? Yeah. And, and there's things that I obviously share and things that I don't just from a respect standpoint. But uh, what what a neat guy. Just a, a really cool guy who loved Benjamin Orr, I'll tell you that. He really did. I mean, he, he said nothing bad about him ever and just praised their friendship, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was a really cool thing to be able to have that guitar. Wow. The- uh, we have kind of connection, Kurt, that you probably don't don't know about. But um, you know, I, I had a, a couple of times that I was able to 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 meet Benjamin, and and it was through Dave, you know, yep. g- getting through that. But um, but first, on on the subject of the guitar, um, you know, I had my the first time I met Benjamin, I had my Cars hat, which was just a regular old uh, trucker hat with um, a Cars patch. Yep. that my wife had sewn onto it. That's and, cool. and I asked Benjamin to sign it. Well, when I handed it to him, he like he put it on. Oh, and wow. I was like, yeah, this is a nice hat, as, as if to say, hey, why don't you <laughs> give me this hat? And I was yeah. like, I said, and I said, I said, well, I'll trade you the hat for your guitar. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he, he signed it and handed it back to me. <laughs> but go. so, hey, man, I, I could have had that guitar before you um, <laughs> if you wanted that hat big enough. But, you know, and I, I, I met Dave, um, you know, a couple times through those two times. And um, he, the, the, the one thing I, I remember is he had um, the, what do they call them? The, the backstage passes, whatever. Yep. He had yep. like a collection of them that was on his belt. Oh, yeah. And it was like Boston, Aerosmith. You know, of course, he had Benjamin on there. Just I mean, it was just loaded. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and he had a a great memory for for remembering things. And the when when Benjamin came to <clears throat> excuse me my hometown, and um, David came in in the bar, and we sat in the bar for a good two three hours before Benjamin even came to the bar and just yeah. looking over the frozen fire book and stuff. And it's like he, he would you know telling stories about different pictures and 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 so forth. So it was just it was incredible. Yeah, he he was a storyteller. He, he's a big guy too, isn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, when, and the first time I met him uh, was in Quincy, Illinois. Mm-hmm. It was a racetrack kind of thing, and and it was with my friend Tom. And Tom had the inn, and I just rode on his coattails. But we're supposed to meet Dave on the on the uh, on stage right um, after um, God, I can't remember a uh, spinning after the song spinning, or, yeah. or during the song when it was. Plan. So that was the game plan, and sure enough, he he walked around there, and he was eating like an elephant ear, or something <laughs> like that, you know, wow. you know, and very cool, very cool. Yeah. And like we walk up there, and we're like, you know, you gonna love us back, and he just kind of motioned for us to come back. Didn't say a word, just eat chomping on his elephant bite. ear. Yeah. yeah, come on back, yeah. And he he handed us off to uh, to Vin Kalisha's, um, wow. from there. So yeah, real really cool guy. Um, I I, I appreciated everybody. Who was connected with that the the or band um, at that time? All very very nice, very cordial. Yeah, when I when I I knew that um, John, did you say Kalicious or Kalicious? I don't really know. Kalicious. Uh, Kalicious. I think so. Well, when when I kind of got a wind of his music through Dave, Dave's like, oh yeah, he's got this band. You know, you got to get a CD, and I I did. I bought it. And it was Mirage. It's it's a cool CD. Um, of you know, uh, John Kalicious, and he, you know, right on the CD. I don't know if you've ever heard it or seen it, but he's, you know, pays tribute right to Benjamin right on the on the cover of the CD. You know, um, nice. I, I I thought, well, I'm gonna call Vince and and ask him about this guitar. You know, because I I just want to make sure it was the real deal. And because uh, again, not knowing who Dave was, I thought, well, if this is connected, I'll, I'll find a way. And I did, and he was so nice to me. I mean, he ordered a couple of or shirts as well. You know. 
And wow. I talked to him and we talked about when he came to, you know, uh, Two Rivers, Wisconsin to play and everything else. And yeah, so he was kind of connected for a while and went with these guys. He said they had a ball going all over the place in touring. So uh, that was neat. Hey, I got a cool little letter here I want to read if I can do that. Oh, please do. Okay. This is from a guy named Dave Curry. <laughs> it says, um, Kurt, this is for you. It is a pick that Benjamin used at his gig in Springfield in August 1998. I also got a signed CD cover from him. I'm sorry, a signed CD cover from him then, so I thought I would part with the pick. It's my way of saying thanks for the work you've had to uh, put in to make these awesome shirts available. And he sends me a guitar pick that Ben flung out at that, uh, at that gig. And I thought, well, what kind of guy is that? That's really cool. He sends me this guitar pick wow so that I, that was our, our first connection dave you know i mean this is back in boy what is this i'm trying to see if i can this is 2012 yes yeah, wow. so the shirts yeah. and when i asked dave tedeschi about i said what's with this music unlimited that stamp there oh yeah that's the guy that's a buddy of mine he owns a guitar sh uh, shop or music shop out in boston i mean instantly that was his answer you know because i thought why does it say music unlimited you know but he had the story instantly and that's where ben got you know, guitar stuff and picks, and so it's really cool that that uh, Dave sent that to me. So I I got that one in my little box of treasures. Yeah, That's nice. and, the, and the, uh, the the signed um, signed CD I've uh, cover I've given that away. Yeah, yeah. see, <laughs> so see, Kurt, you know that Dave he does give everything away. <laughs> You've been on the receiving Can't end. It. Can't take That's it with you. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. I, I kind of heard one of your podcasts, and you guys talked about that because you guys called yourself uh, minimalists, oh. and I'm not. I'm a maximalist hoarder. Hoarder, <laughs> so, yeah. You wanna... but, but, but when I look at the stuff now, it really does make me start to think about doing the same type of thing because how long is it going to be important to me? You know, when I first got in this, I, I was buying that stuff up and collecting these things. And then things kind of changed. You see the stuff that was from United Kingdom on these awards and all that stuff. Like, what what yeah. kind of trash is this? So I got yeah. some real good stuff early on and got the real stuff. But um, the collecting is really slowed down for me. It's just every here and there I'll peek at something. But I, for one, I don't trust a lot of it. And it's a lot of the same things. But I had a, a neat neat collection. Um that I like and enjoy digging out once in a while like I did tonight, so I can maybe think of some things to talk with you guys about. <laughs> but it's the same way. If, if somebody else was really rabid about this, I'd love to be able to, to send some of these things on, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I was just uh, staring at my um, acrylic cutout Rick Fly. Yeah. And, <laughs> and thinking that, um, you know, when I go, probably uh, one of my kids or grandkids will find this and go what the hell is this <laughs> why did why did papa have that <laughs> i don't know your granddaughters will know i have no doubt someone yeah. on the a team will be like i've got to have that <laughs> that was papa's favorite thing <laughs> that's right yeah, we know right. about the rick fly <laughs> rick fly come on rick fly yeah so kurt what kind of stuff do you do you do you, I remember before when you called in, um, when we were on uh, Blog Talk. By yep. the way, fuck, fuck you, Blog Talk. <laughs> Dave, um, <laughs> still not over it. <laughs> I'm not over Blog Talk. Uh, you, you, you were reading us, you know, parts of the tour writers and so forth. Do you have uh, any stuff like that in front of you? I do. Um, yeah, and I don't want to uh, to make a repeat of any of it, but I can definitely share some of that stuff. Um, matter of fact, when I went out to New York, I, I made some copies of some of that. You guys are familiar with the, the Drive Band, correct? Yes. Mary yes. Beth Cronin. Well, 2014, I had kind of a cool year, and I actually, on a, a last-minute deal, my wife and my kids and I flew to New York to see these guys and meet them. And, nice, um, nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I, I remember seeing pictures. Yeah. So I, I designed their logo for the Drive Band. And then in within that logo is Benjamin's guitar, and I don't usually tell people about that, but it it, it is what it is. I mean, so I, I included that in their logo, you know, and it's kind of cool that it's it's part of theirs because obviously they're this Cars tribute band, you know. Wow. But when that's I went really out cool. there, yeah, and met them, uh, that was a, a really really neat deal to be able to uh, 
see them play in person. And I think I, I made a banner for that. They still hang up for every show. If you see that banner in the background drive, I made that banner and brought it with me and, and made a bunch of stickers to give to them, you know? Nice. And, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of neat to, uh, to connect up with them. Dave, what was your question again? I got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, I'm well, Oh, the notes. So here's what I did. So I, I, I loaded <laughs> my laptop full of photos of these things. Cause I thought I want to share this with them. As it turns out, I never did because oh. we, we, Took a ride down the uh, in Mary Beth and uh, in their Jeep, and we're, we just had a ball. We went and looked at the ocean. We watched them play, and we went to uh, breakfast and went out to eat with them. And it's like we just never had time to sit down and look at these photos. So I had all these photos loaded that I never showed her, mm-hmm. you know. So I've got them on my lap, my laptop. But you know, when I was um, getting these these uh, pictures and contracts and things from Dave there's some things here that I can probably share let's see here uh, yeah this is like when they, they played at the uh, the paradise in Boston you know 1999 VIP reception will be from 7 8 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. you know at paradise Ben will need to be there and available around 7 30 for a quick meet and greet about 10 minutes there will be some press invited as well as uh, thank you for the support in this fundraiser which you seem to do a lot of you know mm-hmm. total people expected 50 people we have confirmed ben for wzlx uh with carter allen on monday at 12 30 for an interview in the studio i have arranged for one double suite at the elliott hotel here isn't that funny the elliott hotel <laughs> the elliott hotel <laughs> here it only has nine Boston. fingers that hotel <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring that up later. <laughs> so, you know, it, it talks about that. And here on the 30th, he's going to be at the Paradise uh, with an interview from a, with another gal, Joyce, can't say her name, Kalawak from WBZ TV to air that evening. Brad Delp will also be available for the interview. So it looks like they can do it together. Wow, cool. Uh, can you please update uh, me on the other press? Ben will be doing on Monday. I appreciate it. You know, so and then at the closing, thanks Ben in advance for all of his help in this effort. I'm really looking forward to working with everybody on Tuesday. So those kinds of things, um, you know, I, I I think it's safe to to say I can share that without compromising any information. It's all you know, water under the bridge, you know, but Kurt, still need to show what what kind of guy he was, you know. This is so amazing. Just this week, I posted a quote from Carter Allen about really? Ben. Yes. In fact, I, so I pulled it up while you're reading that because I was like, when, as soon as you said that about him being at the Paradise in 1999, so this is the quote I just posted on my blog. It says, wow. um, it says, I saw Ben at the Paradise last year. His band was really good. I thought he looked the best he'd looked in years and he was still hitting all those high notes. Carter Allen, WZLX FM. And um, that was from an article on October 5th, 2000, so right after Ben had died. Jeez. Wow. And so that but, must be the show he's talking about. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That puts a smile on my face just to, oh, to hear that, you know, make that connection. You know? Yes, yes. That, as soon as you started saying that, I was I was making the connections too. Like, oh, that's what I just was reading about. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, he, and even when I got this stuff from Dave, you know, it, it was something I really held in confidence. Um, and, again, there's certain things that I wouldn't read on these, but it, it, I think it's safe enough to say that there's no, you know, evil intent in, in reading this, but it's not just neat all, to share this all. cool information. You know, another one that's, um, you know, to, to Dave, this was September 99. Dear Dave, first on, I got to zoom in a little bit here. <laughs> first of all, on behalf of Channel 104.9, I'd like to thank you for being a part of this very special event. We are so thrilled and our audience is positively ecstatic about the band's participation. This will truly be a great day for everyone. I just wanted to bring you up to date with a few details. Lyle Frey, or Lyle Frey, with the event group, will be handling all the ground transportation, backline set times, and day of show requirements. To contact Lay regarding his, you know, arrangements, you can contact him at some and such. You know, your hotel uh, reservations are with the Marriott Hotel in San Mateo. Uh, what can I else can I say here? Merchandise booth is being coordinated by Robin such and such. Right. You know, merchandise booth. Yeah, look at that, eh? Mm-hmm. As her previous communication, wonder what they had. Yeah, a percentage of the events T-shirt and poster sales. There you go. We'll go to our charity, to the AIDS Resources Information Services. So I mean, he did a lot of that stuff. That is really cool. What was the event? Did it say what the what that event was? Yeah, let me look here. I'm gonna get up to the top. 
Day of Decadence, September 5th, 1999. The 104.9 Day of Decadence concert. Kurt Gaber. Yes. What? That was, <laughs> I'm serious, like, like a pinball machine is going off in my brain. Just <clears throat> ping, 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 ping. Because that recently was just posted a picture of Ben with Corey, which one? Not, F Corey Feldman. Yeah. Who emceed that event. Oh, okay. I remember seeing that picture. Yeah, that was yeah. I'm pretty positive. That was that same event. That was just, I sure. just discovered that a few weeks ago. Yeah. It blew my mind. That this corroborates these things, you know? I love it. You're, you're, yeah. You are blowing my mind. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Here's another one. From, oh uh, go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. I was going to say, Kurt, you're like the rock and roll Matlock. Yes. Well, <laughs> bring it, a little bit. <laughs> you're bringing it all together, man. <laughs> this Here's another one that I kind of got a kick out of. I didn't, you know, make a connection till later, but here he was going to be at the at the Luxor in Las Ooh. Vegas, uh, December oh. 8th. And my wife and I stayed at the Luxor here a few years ago. We went yeah. to the sign, sign convention, and, and we stayed out there. It was kind of a cool, cool motel. Yeah. But that was that uh, the best, best motel? smelling, best yeah. smelling motel. <laughs> I want to stay at a motel in Vegas. I was going to say, yeah. Kurt, Kurt just is, called the Luxor a motel. Oh, a motel. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a motel. Okay. <laughs> sorry. But... But you know the all those all of those um, hotels in Vegas, you know they they pump spray in, scents in because you know they people smoke in the casinos so and they, they got to do something to combat they, that. They sweat yeah. and they yeah. pee their and pants. And the Luxor by by far smells the best. It's like a <laughs> vanilla kind of thing going on. Um, Mandalay Bay that I stayed at, it's like a eucalyptus kind of minty kind of thing. But no, the Luxor, man, it's awesome. Yeah. It's very cool. Very cool. Okay, yeah. so go ahead. Well, all right, let's just see what else we got here. I think I kind of talked to you before about the, his his backline equipment, you know, what he required. So I don't think I want to go over that one again because it's something we'd already read before. Okay. Does that sound about right? I think yeah, so. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, if let's you, see. but if you have more snacks, we we always like to hear about yeah. the preferred snacks. It's not, it's not like we don't repeat stuff on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to look here again. One, 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 I've got another rider here. This contract rider from 98. doesn't really say where it's going to be. Um, nothing there. Here's one. Friday, July 9th, 17th, 98. At Strecker's Meadows in Kenora, Ontario, Canada. Wow. 90 minute show. Um, no more, no less. Yeah. <laughs> you need this. On this the freaking dot. 90 Here's minutes. A, let's see what this says. Additional stipulations purchaser to provide sound, lights, hotel rooms, ground transportation, plus hospitality as per attached artist rider, which is an integral and binding part of this agreement. Okay, nothing really there. Talks about the money amount and everything else and Dave's signature, but yeah, I wouldn't say that. But that's a cool one. Wow. Um, here's here's one more, July twenty eighth, ninety seven, from Police Productions. This is the Quincy one, Dave. Oh, it was Quincy, Illinois, August ninth. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for giving yes. our company the opportunity to produce a Benor performance. Enclosed you will find an advance sheet and proposal uh, proposed day of show schedule for your August ninth performance in Quincy, Illinois. Yeah, this one I remember reading before because I talked about the, due to the number of bands and requesting that Ben Orr and Starship share the same backline gear with the ex exception of some keyboard differences. This should help uh, to keep us on time and cut way down on set changes. So just some kind of cool there. The same thing, finally, merchandise is 70-30. Venue sells, 75-25 artist sells. Please have your merchandise or contact our office in advance uh, to coordinate this arrival. Was so, that the one cool where, they wanted, where they wanted clean towels? Uh, that was, that was, that <laughs> was that been a different one. Yeah. yeah. Clean towels. So. Remember they had to request clean. Yeah. And, you, yeah. yeah. You never know when a baby's going to be born. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, we'll probably wrap up a, a few of those I, I would, wouldn't mind sharing anyway. So, oh, that's so it's fun. really cool that that was the stuff I'm looking at. Again, you know, picture back in 2007 when I was – getting these things back. I can't believe he sent this to me, you know, oh, so yeah. was, right there was this, you know, just a trust thing to, to realize who he was and that I would, you know, take care of those without divulging too much information, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and since Dave's gone, I mean, it, it, it's a sad, sad thing that he passed, you know, but, um, 
I think it's it's appropriate to be able to share this and tastefully in, in memory of him because again that, that guy couldn't say how much he cared for Ben you know it's unbelievable so it's neat to be able to preserve this and let people know that he was a super super buddy of Ben's you know yeah so well and you're yeah. you're obviously handling it in a way that honors both of those men you know Dave and Ben yeah. both and so I was just love I so appreciate that you're sharing that with us yeah cool you know, that uh, that Quincy show is is one that is on YouTube the the entire show you can find or and in different songs um and of course the Springfield show mm -hmm. Donna just recently posted that one um there's a there's that one that's in Boston in a mall or something South Station yeah oh that's a cool one yeah that's um, one of my favorites. probably the that. best quality one that yeah. you can uh, that you can find you know I would but, love to find that uncut Oh, uh, me too. Absolutely. And you know what else? You know that you see a photographer, a cameraman, you know, walking around. So someone, there's more than one person filming it. I want right. to find that person. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me shuffle my papers like Donna does, Dave? Do you hear that? Yeah. I'm so proud yeah. of you, Kurt. I'm so proud of you. Because <laughs> I was looking for a note because this is relative to that Southside Station performance. Oh, okay. I think I had this because I was going to ask Dave. Um, I'll put it right here. South Side Station. After drive, the train announcement is made and Ben jokes, let's all go. We'll go visit Leo. <laughs> and I, I said, who's he talking about? You know? And I don't have an answer written down. So I don't know if I never did ask him that one, but I wonder um, what he was talking about. Do you guys remember that? Let's go visit Leo. No, I don't remember him saying that. I got to go oh, find it. Yeah. Yeah. He says that. Let's all go. Because he joked. Because remember, they kind of interrupted while he was mm -hmm. talking yeah, yeah, okay, yeah I do remember that part. Comes over. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wonder what he meant. You yeah, know? I'd, have, I'd have picked up my purse and been walking toward the stage. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with you. Yeah. <laughs> On in that Quincy show, um, at the very beginning, when when Benjamin first comes out, he says, um, "Just for the record," or I think it's after the, they sing the first song. He says, "Just for the record, we weren't late. We just got here first. <laughs> and and what the deal with that is is. Um, because you know we got backstage before, our I mean, we got backstage after he started. But what what Dave was telling us was was that um, God, I'm thinking not Motley Crue. Huh? Who the hell was with him? It was um, flirting with disaster. Those guys that sing that song. I don't know. It's, it does start with an M. What it was a Southern rock band. But anyway, okay. they were late. They were supposed to be going on, and they still weren't there yet. And, and Benjamin and the guys had rolled in on their bus. And so they said, hey, can you guys go on now? And mm. so, and so you know, guys were kind of in a tizzy and pissed off and so forth because, you know, they wanted to relax a little bit before they had to go on. And they had to, you know, kick it into gear. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why Benjamin makes that comment. We're, no, no. Because there is like okay. a real long, real long wait between Head East and when Benjamin came on. And, yep. and people just assumed that... that uh, Benjamin and his band were, were late, late getting there. No, they just right. they just got there before. Um, no, I mean I still can't remember the name of that band, but whatever that Southern rock band is, hmm. they, they yeah. got there. In fact, you can see their bus pulling in during Ben's set. Oh wow! When they finally got there, so they were probably tearing up a hotel room somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, Molly Hatchet is the name. There of you it. go. Oh yep. yeah, that sounds familiar. They are they are known in in uh, in Springfield here as um, a band that totally tore up a hotel room or hotel rooms in our town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the heck? Come on. Yeah, appropriate, you know. with, appropriate with the hatchet, huh? Ah. Yeah, rock and roll lifestyle, man. Rock and roll lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Right. You got it. Yes. As you know, Greg was like that too. Greg Hawks. He was a wild one. He would. Tilt, oh, tilt uncontrollable. Pictures. Yeah, he would tilt <laughs> pictures. Got a little off kilter, boy, that guy. Whew. Yeah. yeah. I, always, I always put the Bible in a different drawer. <laughs> that really upsets him. Oh, yeah, boy. Making your mark, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Take, take, take the pen. You know, that's a, there with the pad. Oh, that's always a good one. Nice, that nice. That really takes him off. My mm -hmm. daughter went to Belize last year, and they, on the way home, they, they, the flight got canceled. They ended up having to stay at a hotel in Texas. And um, so her and her friend, they were in one room, and she went, it was a school group that they went with. Anyway, they left a scavenger hunt for their maid 
or you know, the, the housekeeper who was going to come clean up after they left their, they used that little pad of paper and they left a little scavenger hunt all around the room for the cleaning lady. They thought they were who probably so didn't funny. speak English. Yeah. <laughs> She said they left little nice, it was little nice notes, and you know, so we just thought she'd get a kick out of it. So. Yeah. It's harmless. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's how you get the good service. If you stay at a hotel multiple nights, you know, they, they, they have those same, the same people are there every day, for the most part. You, you, you catch that, the, the housekeeping lady, mm -hmm. and you tip her then on that first day and say, hey, you know, you're taking care of a room, just wanted to give that to you so I don't miss you. Yes. And then, boom, you're on it. You've got yep. the clean towels, yep. the whole bit. you got the chocolate on the pillow, sunshine and rainbows, Choc people. I'm telling you. <laughs> chocolate on the pillow. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> sunshine and rainbows. And a little cash. So it goes a long way. And a little rubbing compound. <laughs> and a little rubbing compound. <laughs> does go a long way. Don't forget that, people. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Always keep a spare bottle in your travel bag. <laughs> <laughs> So let me ask this, since I'm talking to two people who uh, who have rock hall tickets, um, are you two planning on uh, posting lots of pictures and stuff like that when the time comes? I think so. Donna, take it. Me? I well, I think so. I I still can't wrap my my brain around it, and um, I'm still figuring out my what my plans are and stuff. So I haven't thought too far ahead. But Kurt, I definitely hope to meet you there. I, I will think not, that should happen. Yeah. I hope that's not too forward of me to say. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. No, I'm I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even I'm 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 not a huge planner. You can probably ask my wife that, and she'd laugh about it. Cause I wait till the last minute on a lot of things. But I I did actually get a motel reserved for this thing already. Is it the I knew I was going to this whether I got tickets or not. And um, <laughs> I, I hope I hope it works out that maybe Dave can go because I I told my I'd taxi him over, so I'll swing down and pick him up. Serious, I'm dead serious. I'd pick him up and yeah. and drive over. You know, you got so, a chauffeur, uh, Dave. You got a chauffeur. I'm, I'm all in for a road trip. I'm kind of a uh, an airplane guy, but not this you know, my, time, pal. We got to yeah. talk and talk and talk. And talk. <laughs> my, my my biggest problem um, is is the time factor with the whole oh, thing. Oh yeah, and yeah. The, 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 our our spring break is the week before this, and if it would have been, you know, the week if they would have, if those two would have synced up, holy crap! But yeah, it's, I, it's a I situation completely... where, you know, I, I I'd have to leave on Friday night, yeah, and get there late Friday night, and then just and then come back on Sunday. That kind yeah, of thing, so. see, I'm I'm just like I didn't even think of that. I just thought. Okay, here's what I'm doing, and I'm going. I, mean, I, I work for myself, so I can make these things happen. Yeah. And I, I told my wife, I'm not missing this, no matter what. I mean, I'm going, and and she was fine with that. But um, if it were to work out somehow, Dave, that offer stands, you know, because oh, awesome. I, I understand from flying, you know, it'd be quicker. But I mean, I'm I'm going to drive, and and no matter who's going with me, I'm going to have a blast to go do this thing. So <laughs> I've, I've I've driven from from my neck of the woods in Central Illinois to to Cleveland before. That's yeah. That's a long ass drive, and I yeah. can only imagine from you know, you coming from up north. Yeah, uh, it's even longer. Yeah. So, but it, it's it's a nice drive. Except Indiana, you know, you go through Indiana. Indiana's like Georgia. It's like the same. <laughs> it's the same thing. You can't tell where you're at. It lasts forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a little lame. Yeah. Montana. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. To go back to your question, Dave, um, my, uh, the as far as pictures and stuff go, I definitely want to do that. I don't my the camera that I have is not super great, so I have to see if Ken will let me take his. But his is like really f a photographer setup thing, and it's probably too fancy for me. So I may end up just a bust because I don't I have any good equipment that I can handle. So yeah, Kurt, and then even with that, you know how that goes too, because I've got a I got a nice you know camera and the zoom and all that, but. Which I'll, I'll probably try and do to get some good ones, but man, some of the stuff it happens so fast, and you mm -hmm. seem to want to post it quick, you know, so I can shoot with my iPhone and do this and that. I don't take the pictures I, I used to, you know, uh, because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, the cell phones have kind of goofed it up a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm sure I'll, I'll I'll do some of that. But there'll be so many people doing it, I don't want to be too redundant either, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I don't know that I'd share as I went along, but maybe after the fact, I would probably do it because I don't want to. 
I don't want to miss out on anything, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the big thing now. Um, artists are now prohibiting um, phones yes. and concerts and things like sure. that. Because I mean, you think about it, we, we, we try and document everything now with a picture. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, you know, especially annoying at concerts with people trying to film the concert. I don't, right. I don't understand that aspect at all. But, um, but, you know, e even in our daily lives, you know, um, you know, with the kids or whatever, you know, the k kids are tired of getting their picture taken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they are. You can just tell. And, you know, and then you realize, God, how much am I missing, you know, being, being with the people I love by trying to get a picture of whatever, you know, yeah. it's all so in busy. your head. You're so busy monkeying with your phone that you're yeah. missing what, you know, you're not sitting there enjoying what's going on. Right. Yeah. But I'll definitely try to try to do something. I mean, yeah, yeah. I got some people that I'm definitely gonna meet out there, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be very cool. You got all the connections, Kurt. I might have to uh, jump on your coattails there and go meet some of the cool people. Hmm. Well, you know, that enough. You noticed, you noticed there, was Thanks, no, <laughs> there was no comment from Kurt. You notice he's like, like, uh, like, how can I shake her? Oh. Well, he's what Kurt's thinking is, well, sh she's already podcasting with Dave. What does she need to meet more yeah, cool people? That's, that's what went through his head. That's what Kurt was thinking. Hundred percent. Yeah. Holy moly! Poor Kurt. Well, regardless, <laughs> you, you know, we obviously will have another episode um, about the Rock Hall after all that's um, through with. And yeah. uh, Kurt, I think you got to come back and be on that yes. podcast as well. Yeah, yeah I do that. Yes, yes, good idea. That would be awesome. You hey, and you're like the first returning um, person on our podcast, Kurt. Ooh. How about that? Bing, I'm, bing, bing. I, was, I was nervous. I mean, I'm, I'm calm down now, but I was a, kind of a little nervous. Uh, one thing, you know, when you have these headphones on, you don't hear yourself talk as much because I have noise canceling headphones. You know, yeah, and that's how they're they're turning on the battery. So I'm talking at this computer screen, and I can hear you guys great, but I can't hear myself very well. So at first, it was a little tough to like get used oh, to that. Oh wow! Uh, I'm comfortable with it. So yeah, yeah, I couldn't do that. I I love I love listening to myself, <laughs> <laughs> and so does Donna. <laughs> yeah, Donna loves listening to herself too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to this episode at least a good half dozen times. Yeah, I, I listen to myself while I talk, and then Donna, she just has to get that extra time in where she listens to our podcast. Over which, and over. Uh, hey, let me say something about that subscribing thing, because even I, I can, I'll be honest and say that I've, if you guys have 22 podcasts, I've probably listened to maybe half, you know, and um, at first I was listening to the first few, then I was like, okay, I'm out of time, I can't do this, and, and then... I would try and pick away at a few here and there. It was really fun to to listen to these and, and hear about what's going on. And then even myself, I didn't subscribe to that. It's just it doesn't it doesn't I don't think about it. So finally you remind me, like, okay, boom. So I clicked the button after I listened for a few times. So I think people are doing that. <laughs> I counted forty five as well. And if you had, you know, 180 viewers or whatever that was, I, I don't know. It's just sometimes you just don't think about it, you know. Yeah. yeah. People well, and, will catch on. And in, in in actuality, when you know you're looking at doing podcast episodes that are over an hour long, um, sometimes going on two hours, you know, we, we really need to, um, start, uh, doing our feed into, uh, iTunes and Podbean and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, the disadvantage of being just on YouTube is that, you know, people are on their phone and, and listening to us. Yeah. They, they can't do anything else, you know? Right. Um, right. And when you when you're on the you know the podcast app or you know iTunes or whatever you can you can just have it go and just go about your day and people listen to you at work and things like that so that's that's yeah. the next step for us. Yeah. And even early on, what 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 I found is when I was listening to the first few, um, I think it, it's like you couldn't pause it. Remember, or was it just yeah. me being that? Yeah. Home? I'm Long like, what happens here if I had something to do? I couldn't pause. I'm like, well, how do we get back to this? So I would like take screenshots of where I was on the little timeline. <laughs> yeah. Once it got that's, YouTube, then it was like, okay, this is much easier. Yeah. So now it's it's easier to listen. So that's a, a huge help just in that, you know. Yeah. That's now hard. you understand why I fuck you, blog talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blog talk. <laughs> But that's know. okay. Those are neat steps of this whole process, you know. So when you got two thousand followers, then you can laugh at all this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> oh, we laugh sure. at it now. We think we're hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. I do too. 
I do too. Yeah. Hey, every record. episode makes us uh, more the uh, longest running podcast about the cars. Yeah. So. <laughs> <That's possible. laughs> yeah. Hey, Nobody relative, else is doing it. Relative to podcast stuff, um, there, there's some kind of cool things that, you know, when I hear this, like your Dante Tomaselli thing, you know, <laughs> when, when he, he does those soundtracks, I was listening to some of that stuff. And when I listened to it, um, and he talked about his uh, somewhere, I don't know if I read it, you know, his influence from the Cars music and Greg's synthesizer stuff. Yes, yes. It's so neat that I kind of had the same idea except on a way less technical level because I think when I was probably eh, 20, early 20, 21, 22, I wanted um, a synthesizer so bad because of the Cars. And I, I used to let a race cars going up north and do whatever I could to save this money. And I, I bought a brand new Roland keyboard for like seventeen hundred dollars back in the day wow. and i mean it was brand spanking new and i thought i was going to be the next best thing you know <laughs> i think i took two lessons that is the same for me Can't but I, I still have that synthesizer and the funny thing is is that what i use it for is for spook shows on halloween <laughs> i got a, a friend who was a former employee that loved doing that so we'd get together every year and create these spook houses out in his you know garage and out through his yard and in his woods and invite kids and scare the shit out of them and playing this synthesizer with the scary music and i had so much fun with that that it was the, it was the hit every year i had my own little room to do this and just played that synthesizer so it was kind of cool comparing that to dante you know yeah was, that's pretty awesome stuff it, it sounded like the x-files his stuff is so cool you know yeah it is so yeah. To that, you know? yeah are you friends with him on facebook kurt Finally, just because of, you know, listening to you guys say that name over and, and th- I got to check this guy out. So I did, you know, Good. I don't think we've messaged or anything, but it's really cool to, to see what he's all about. So yeah. you very rarely mentioned Dante Thomas. No, <laughs> yeah. I like to keep it on the down low. Yeah. Yeah. The first rule of Dante. Fly don't under talk the about radar. Dante. Yes. <laughs> Uh, good old Dante. He's one of my faves for sure. <laughs> another another podcast related thing too. You know, you guys talked about that Alpine Valley and, and you went to that. Did you did you know that when Stevie Ray Vaughan left Alpine Valley, that's when his helicopter crashed. He was he oh was Oh my gosh, at, really? At Alpine Valley. Yeah, when you said that, I just listened to that podcast a day or two ago. I'm thinking, holy crap, you were at that? Well that that was like the early nineties, I think, that happened. So yeah. Wow. Wow. It's constant there, and that's when his helicopter crashes from that venue. So, anyway, a little tidbit that I, I just remember reading uh, through my notes here that was rel- you know, relative to your podcast. Yikes. You take notes on the podcast? No, but I made notes because I knew I'd be talking, and I want to make sure I had my act together. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to be all mm-hmm. flattered. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Well, these are notes about the podcast, so I guess, yeah, maybe I did make notes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, that's so, awesome. Doesn't it just make you feel valid that people are listening and they pay attention? Just like oh, your yeah. shirts, your shirt stuff, Dave. You, you're saying how you, you nobody bought a shirt yet. Well, I tell you what, the other day I finally was logged on and had the blue shirt picked and a black shirt. I'm like, which one do I want? I thought, well, red. Pretty soon I got distracted and never did it, but I'm going to get one of those shirts. So I think those are really <laughs> cool. I love that design. Yeah. Nice it does make us feel good, Kurt. I, I love the podcast. I love doing this. And, you know, Dave and I kind of started it as a, you know, just for kicks because we like to talk about car stuff. And and so I love it no matter if anybody ever listened that wouldn't, you know what I mean? I, I would still love it just as much. But it is so, it does make me feel good. It is so validating when other people listen and enjoy it and interact with us it's i love it it's just great makes me feel really well, good that, that's cool i mean I'm, I'm glad to be able to be on here i hope i'm not blabbing too much because i could keep going for a while i mean i got some notes here that uh, i mean that's that's what i'm here for so if you want to talk go, i'll tell you let her rip kurt okay well here's this is something that i think is really interesting and you guys have maybe seen the same i've kind of touched on a little bit tonight was how you know facebook and social media have have changed their relationship as fans i mean think about when you know dave when you went back in 84 and saw these guys you know you probably saw it advertised somewhere or, or heard it on a radio or whatever and then you'd see them on stage and that's it i mean would you ever dream that you'd be able to converse with these guys in a facebook message 
yeah. or have them address you on Twitter. You know, I or mean, it's not me. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> never considered it. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah, <Dave>. that's <laughs> you know, it was in eighty four in Alpine Valley and I pointed to that stage and I said, One day yeah. I shall be blocked. <laughs> yeah. They're like, What the hell does that mean? <laughs> and my buddy was like, What the what the fuck yeah. does blocked mean? Yeah. You'll see. Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but but isn't it it's interesting that initially um, when Facebook was fresh and before it got so big, I mean, I, I was able to connect with some of these, uh, you know, music celebrities of the cars, I guess I'd say, and I couldn't believe that I was able to do it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they were pretty good about it at first, but then I can completely understand where it would become overwhelming. Yeah. Because even with, you know, with Greg, all of a sudden, I mean, I think, oh, geez, I can be a friend with Greg Hawk. So I clicked on that, and I thought that was so cool. And then mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm going to just message him and see if he answers me. Well, he did. You yeah. know, I mean, I asked him, and, and you guys had talked about this before with the ending of the Down Boy. So it transitioned to You Wear Those Eyes. And I heard you talk about that on one of your podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I asked, how did, how did you do that? How was that done? And he, you know, kind of went on to explain you know, what he did to fade this and do that to, to get that sound. I thought it was so cool that he would actually answer that, you know? Yeah. And then um, even with Elliot, too, you know, it was a case where early on I did the same thing. I, w I was, I bought, uh, I had a guitar, which I bought another one, by the way. I bought one just like the one I got of Ben's. It's a, uh, Ben's is a 1990. I bought a 1989 Les Paul standard that's almost identical. I mean, wow. right down to the gold, gold hardware and the cream pick guard, everything. Because that one is the one I would want to take the lessons and just leave the other one at home. Yeah. Just yeah. Happen, you know? I don't blame well, you. Yeah, I wanted to get an amp. So I'm thinking, well, do I ask him? I'll try it. So I sent him a message, and I'll be damned if he didn't reply. You know, And wow. I, I, I preached it out at the time. And I kind of have to laugh that I did it, but I just thought, see, he didn't need an answer, you know? <laughs> and uh, i got to see if I can find it. Here it is. I just thought this is so cool. Um, I asked him about input on an amp, you know, do you have any advice for a guy like me? This, I'm not going to read the whole works, but he answers the Davila is a good choice. I myself own one, uh, one of the, and I got this cut off on the side, one of something. Oh, one of the one that has the Celestion speaker with that amp, you can get uh, more sound with reverb, reverb or a very heavy ore drive for more. And again, it's cut off on the right side. I don't know what I had printed it else wrong. Uh, and the other amp I look at is the reissue of the 65 Fender uh, DeVille. But with that, you'd have to add a pedal for heavier sound, very sweet tone. That's been on millions of records. Good choices. You know? I mean, he answered that. Yeah. And I just didn't believe didn't ask him about his finger? <laughs> God, Kurt. Well, I, <laughs> you had a chance. <laughs> I, I didn't know about it at the time. Sorry. Yeah. But you, you know, there are some collectors out there that if they had the chance, they'd collect that finger. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have it in a shadow box. <laughs> yeah. Or, or sew it on to their other hands. They could play six fingers. <laughs> six finger bass. <laughs> six string guitar, right? Sew so it on to their <laughs> <laughs> They got to be a lefty, though, right? Frank and Easton. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, I never knew you had six fingers. Well, I don't. This one was Elliot Easton's. <laughs> Cut it attached. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he lost it on the panorama tour. Yeah. I couldn't believe crowd. it. I, he threw his pick out and his finger came out with it. I couldn't believe it. I picked it up it's off like, the floor. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. Even had a ring on it. it was awesome. <laughs> Which I left. You guys it. are nasty. I left it intact. I had it sewn on with the ring still on. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to keep it authentic. Wow. Oh my gosh! Can, can you can you imagine poor Benjamin if he was on Facebook? All of the crap oh. he would get from people. Oh my! Gosh. Oh my god! He, he had, well, Ben was not a techie guy. No, I don't think. I he do was. know that talking to him he was not a techie guy so i don't think he he would have gone gone that route but that poor guy <laughs> you know, people would have bothered him to death oh yeah <laughs> not I mean, me even, but... yeah even with me you know doing these short little contact here and there you know it's like do i dare do this but you know when when he replied back and greg did another time you know and he was up 
no problem. Thanks. Cheers. You know, I just thought that was so cool that he would address you. I mean, here's a guy that I used to listen to in headphones as a kid growing up, and then to be able to, you know, have a down-to-earth sort of conversation, I just thought it was really, really cool, you know, kind of a, a great connection to have. Well, and yeah. I, I do feel like all four of the guys, in one way mm. or another, they do they do maintain a social media presence. I mean, for Rick, it's through Paulina, I feel like. Yeah, um, right. But even David will chime in here and there, especially in... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he won't accept your friend request. Oh, yeah. And there, <laughs> you know, it'll be there forever. <laughs> yeah, but he, you know, he'll yeah. comment here and there. He's commented in the Greg Hawks group really nicely. Right. Um, yeah. he, he'll correct things on big salad pages if the information's yeah. wrong. He likes to make sure it's at the record straight. Um, right. But yeah, they're all, you know, they're all there, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, even, even even this is this. I'll just say this too. That was another one. Same thing early on. Friends with Paulina Poroskova, you know, like who, who ever dreamt that, you know? Well, it's like, that's yeah. pretty good. It's Paulina Poroskova. Right. Come on. Right. <laughs> no, same thing. Here's what I did. This is a long time ago because now it just doesn't work that way. Sent a message asking her about the ore shirts if she'd be interested or anybody, you know, within that group. You get my hint? Yeah. Be interested in ore shirts. And her reply was, no, um, I no. I just I. It was like I I can't um, comment or have anything to do with the cars. That's their business. You know what I mean? That's it was oh, just a nice. simple reply, but just cool that it was addressed. You know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's pretty great. Pretty great. Well, right. I got I got another little interesting one here for you. I don't know if you guys may have seen this. Maybe maybe Dave, maybe Don, because you guys are both pretty avid watchers of all things cars. Do you remember a few years ago when um, Greg's base was uh, for sale on eBay? No. Yes. There? Yeah, that was something. Did you bid on it? Uh, no. <laughs> well, I did. did. I you? was seconds from getting it. Yeah. I, I wanted it because, I mean, I had this other guitar, and I thought that would be cool because, well, I heard about it from the big salad. <laughs> And I thought, well, I'll, I'll look. So I did. And sure as heck, there it was. And he explained what it was and, you know, leather of authenticity. And uh, hey, what are you laughing at, Donna? The fact that you know just, who the big salad is. I love and, what she's laughing at. And that that's, and that that's his name, the big salad. <laughs> that you just threw that in there as if you were saying, you know, Joe Schmo. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Smith, yeah, well, the big salad. Yeah. But very nice of him to, to bring it up. So, so I went after that. And I, I watched it and bid on it and then um i i was so uh, I, I i same thing I, I printed out stuff on that because i was so close to getting that i was within two seconds to go and all of a sudden bam one of those bids you know proxy what it was came yeah, in yeah got it but i i actually sent a message through ebay saying man i wanted that so bad and and it was kind of fun to give it a try and and greg replied back same thing, you know. Well, thanks for bidding it up, you know. I mean, it went to a, another bidder, but it was kind of cool. And he says, if I get rid of anything else, I'll let you know, you know. So I just thought nice. that was nice. cool that he addressed it again, you know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, what would I do with that base, you know. But it was still <laughs> just the fact. It was the one that they used, if in case you didn't know, Donna, to uh, for the move like this record. Wow. That was the base that he used, and then for them, to, I thought, why would he get rid of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. There was a dude back in the day, and I'm meaning back in the day of the Frozen Fire uh, email group, who bought Rick Ocasek's furniture. Oh, it yeah? Was, it was like some 60s pop kind of, you know, nice. furniture. But yeah, yeah. He, he bought it and, and got a letter of authenticity or whatever. But how cool is that? And, you know, like if you reach in between the cushions, you know, you find like a... <laughs> Cheerio or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Meatloaf. <laughs> yes, yeah. meatloaf. <laughs> you know, some popcorn. Yeah. A couple yeah. pennies. Cigarette butt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kurt, Cigarette butt. Kurt how, yeah. how many guitars do you think uh, your wife's going to let you buy? For a um, who doesn't play guitar. <laughs> uh, no, she, she wouldn't mind. I'm just she knows. Yeah, she knows that I work hard for this stuff and... and can afford to do it, so she wouldn't have a problem with it. Right. But it's just that when the opportunity comes up, that's when it's kind of cool, you know, to yeah. be able to 
maybe grab something like that. That yeah. was a real neat one. But, to be ready yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. To me, I, I got the holy grail, so I, I should just be satisfied with that, really. You know. <laughs> well, it kind of sounds like it started a little addiction for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, did. which is cool. It's very cool. I was thinking because you know, poor Dave. He he uh, he can't hang a Rick fly from the ceiling, and his and he he's got his little <laughs> acrylic one now that he gets to he hides it behind his computer whenever. No, it's on Anybody's top of my home. computer. You know you hide it because you know you're going to get in trouble. No. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do hide. <laughs> so I was just curious how what what Nat's tolerance was for uh, guitar. Yeah, she was she was good when when she gave me the green light on that one. Uh, it was all good. And even when I when I bought this other one, I just wanted to be able to have a guitar that I wouldn't be afraid to bring out and bring to lessons and yeah. and play. You know. Because at first, that's the only one I had, so I just brought it, you know. But it, just worrying about, okay, from, you know, cold Wisconsin weather, you got to be careful about, you know, bring it into a warmer climate and all this thing. So I was real nervous about that, and I just I can't keep doing this. So I just, you know, keep it at, at home in the safe, in a gun safe, you know. Yeah. And uh, the other one is just kind of hanging around. That's my go-to guitar a lot, you know. <laughs> Wait, Kurt, what are you going to do if somebody breaks into your house, you know, it's in dark, and you open up the gun safe, and you pull out, and you start playing the burglar a song? What do you? Gonna, what do you that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, <laughs> scare him away with bad music, right? Oh crap! I grabbed the wrong thing. Uh, I got a twelve gauge. <laughs> Just a second. Less ball. Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. Hey, I got something that's really pretty rare here. You guys probably don't have this in your collection. Okay. I actually have an autographed copy of the CD. The boot. <laughs> the boot. <laughs> the boot. Bravo, Kurt. <laughs> okay, that's bullshit. <laughs> the boot. <laughs> that was funny when you guys are going on about that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I can't believe yeah. this. <laughs> that wasn't even our joke. <laughs> we milked yeah. it, though, didn't we? We milked we, that one. <laughs> what do you mean we milked it? We, we're milking it. We're in the process of milking that still. <laughs> we'll, we'll be bringing that up like five episodes from now. I know we will. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Okay, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a little plug here, if you don't mind. Okay. It's not a work plug, but this is kind of neat. If, if you wanted to see that guitar, I don't know if I told Dave this or not, um, I, I have one video on youtube that i put on after i played with another band there was a, it was a little well we had a little garage band we played wednesday nights at the shop and this is when i started doing this and a couple of guys had played years and years ago and and they were pretty talented but just rusty and all of a sudden they got better and better and better and here's me just novice struggling you know <laughs> and pretty soon i got kicked to the wayside and they went on and did their own band so of course I made the logo for this band, and and they had a cool little band playing together, and um, again this thing started at our shop on Wednesday nights, you know, but they played the, together at a, at a at one of their houses in an afternoon just for fun. So it was a bunch of friends and drinks and summertime fun, you know, and and they said bring your guitar down, you're gonna play with us. So I played eight um, six seven five three zero nine Jenny Jenny, <laughs> <laughs> and my wife taped it with a phone, you know. And then I ended up sticking it on, on YouTube. So it's called Kurt Gaber Guitar Debut, I think. <laughs> so if you look on there, that was that was Ben's guitar that I was playing, you know. Because even on the introduction of it, when, you know, because these guys had a mic and they're telling the, the small little bunch of friends in the crowd, well, the last time this guitar was played, it was played by, you know, and they're like, oh, geez, why do you got to do this? You know, I'm going to be up there as a hack. But they said, you know, played by <laughs> Ben so you get this big introduction. But it, it was kind of fun. I mean, I was nervous, but I did it, and that uh, was the first time I'd ever played in, in you know any kind of a public setting. But if, if anyone wanted to get a look at that guitar, that yeah. that, that was it that day. I'm, you know, I'm watching it so. now, Kurt. Yeah. Are you really? Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Can I can I post it on our in our group, Kurt? Sure. Look at Kurt go. Yeah. <laughs> look at and that. the cool thing is he's eating a hot dog at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little backyard barbecue kind of thing yeah. going on. But I was. Uh, looking at the strings the whole time. I mean, I, you know, I had to. I just could not look up because I didn't know <laughs> enough, you know. You can't, 
You can't tell because you're wearing sunglasses. <laughs> well, it's yeah, cool. I had to be cool, yeah. <laughs> and you're hiding behind the keyboardist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's under a blanket? Is that the next thing you're you, going to say? <laughs> you've got a Danny Bonaducci vibe going on there. You're not really playing. <laughs> hey, listen now, listen. The, that guy, that keyboardist, the guy that's been a keyboard, he actually plays guitar too. I think he's got a guitar on his neck. Yeah, he does. You ever hear of Dave's Guitar in La Crosse, Wisconsin? No. Okay. Dave's Guitar is a huge guitar shop in La Crosse, and he has sold guitars to Clapton, and he's got an unbelievable collection of guitars there. Well, that, that guy there that's playing the keyboard, his brother is Dave. Wow. Uh, oh, wow. He's, he's a, a music teacher and a really super nice guy. I think his name is Ken Rogers. So Dave Rogers would be the owner of Dave's Guitar Shop, but uh, talented, talented musician. So it was just neat to even, you know, be playing with, with him, you know? Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> that's a nice video, Kurt. Yeah. And that's, I got to tell Natalie that because she was, she was a videographer. Look nice. at all the gifts, the gifts and memes I can make out of this now. Oh, Kurt, you <laughs> yeah, opened the door. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm game. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kurt, is there is there anything else you can you can lay on us before we wrap her up? How much time you got? What, what, whatever you got. Okay. Give us give us your best thing to be best your. Thing? To be your to, to to go out with. Okay, well, I would say that when I, I don't know if this is the best, but I'm just going to read it off here. <laughs> when I went to um, the Cars when they played in 2011 um, in Minneapolis, that was exciting for me to actually because you know, when I saw the new Cars in 2007, you know, that was a run grin and all that. It was cool to see them. And that the the guitar sounded great, the keyboards are great. You know, the vocals just it just wasn't the same without Ben and Rick, obviously. But when they came around in 2011, you know, there was a lot of hype, and I was excited to see them. And I went to to First Avenue in Minneapolis. Um, that's where they played. It's a little smaller club, but um, my wife and I went there, and we, we kind of met some friends in line that I um, members. I ended up selling shirts too later, you know. I met Deb Morton's <laughs> and another guy. It was so cool to see them because they were Facebook friends, you know. Mm -hmm. And here we were in line at this concert. And we were like within probably, I don't know, maybe the first 30 people through the door. So when we get in there, uh, could have went right up to the very front of the stage, I mean right in front. And we actually walked there. I'm thinking, God, do I want to be this close where it's, you know, this cranking loud? I mean, my, my left <laughs> ear is hard enough to take this. I got to wear an earplug. And at, at the last minute, like, you know what, we better just, back it down a little bit. So we went to the next level, this tier, where it's up a little higher, so you can see really good too, you know? And we had front row right in that. Well, then we thought this is even better, you know? So then right before the show goes on, um, the guys come out, all these stools are there. They kind of like, oh, this is all private seating, reserved seating. So here we stood and, you know, we could have had front row right in front of the cars, but instead we thought we'd take this. And then we kind of got the boot and they didn't have reserved seating or anything. So it kind of was a <sighs> kick in the pants. <sighs> And I had made this really neat sign for Greg Hawks. I made two of them because I, I brought one um, that I wanted him to autograph that I could have, and I want to give him one, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're holding <laughs> one, these signs one, Greg? up. Sign yeah. this one. Yeah. So we're <laughs> holding these signs up during the show, and he looked at me and gave me a thumbs up, and I thought, oh, wow, he sees it. You know, I thought that was so cool. So when the show was all done, which, by the way, was fabulous, I went down there to um, wait in line or do anything I could to see him come out, you know. And they just never did. We hung around mm -hmm. forever, and I took pictures of them putting all their gear in the in the road cases and doing this stuff, and and you know waited and waited, and they just said, "Out, oh, the guys aren't coming out," you know. Oh. So I was bummed. Greg was like behind the curtain, you know, scared, thinking, "Yeah, that weird weird ass guy from Facebook who man, yeah. asks <laughs> me all kind of questions is hanging out there. I'm not going out there." <laughs> that was it, Dave. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But that was that was fun. I mean, it was um, it was electric because it was Cars fans going to see the Cars. You know what I mean? It wasn't like just yeah. some show. I'm check this out. So when when they sang the big ones, and and when I say the big ones, I mean the, I think the most response were the the songs that Ben sang. Man, when those came up, people went nuts. You know, I mean yeah. that Ben would have sang is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, and Rick sang it, and it's obviously different when he does it. But Elliot's guitar playing was unbelievable the keyboard was great you know and it was so weird to see david in this silver long hair there you know just doing his thing yeah but 
I, it was really, really a cool thing. I mean, I, I waited forever to see that and had that regret from not seeing everybody when I went to Texas that time. But that was a huge bucket list to be able to see those guys in person, you know. So yeah. I was thrilled. That's so cool. It's too bad they yeah. didn't come out, but still, what a great, yeah. what a great experience. Yeah. You know, I think David, um, when they do their their songs for the uh, Rock Hall induction, I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to hit one of his cymbals with his beard. <laughs> <laughs> to do like a drum fill. <laughs> Very full, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite luxurious. It's, it is quite luxurious. Yeah. I'm afraid that. Hey, I'm afraid oh, I was going to say. Go ahead, Don. Right, right, right. Hey, what? <laughs> can you what? Hey, what? See, see how perfectly hey. Kurt fits into our podcast because he can sound like an idiot with us. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just going to say, if I if I end up in that press room for David Robinson, because I'll just come up to him and put my little fingers in his beard. I gotta, oh. I gotta touch that thing. <laughs> yeah. I get kicked out. Well, you know why. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sounds fair. I was gonna ask Dave a question here. You know, I, I kind of heard that you play guitar too. I, didn't well, I, realize. I am very skilled at the 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 children's music library, my friend. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask you if, if you had any other hits besides the peace song or if that was the, number, <laughs> the highest charting hit you had had. I, in, in India, I think it went up to like 34, I'm pretty sure. It hit, 12, like, in, it hit 12 in Turkey. Turkey. In Turkey. Turkey. There yeah. you go. I was <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was a self-taught, uh, self-taught guitar guy, you know, buying all the, uh, the, the, uh, the books that would show you how to make the chords, you know, like hits of 1979 or whatever, <laughs> buying those books. And that's how I learned to play. And, yeah. and when, when I uh, got into the teaching gig and uh, with elementary, I realized, Hey, I had kind of a cool tool here mm -hmm. to, uh, to use. And uh, that's just kind of how I went with it. I always had a guitar in my classroom and, and uh, played with the kids. So yeah, I know a lot of kids tunes, but <laughs> not a lot of anything else. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like I said, I'm more of a guitar owner than a player, you know, but uh, that's pretty fun. Yeah, I've got a 12-string, um, uh, um, I, I, and I've got a 6-string, an Epiphone, I think they are. Yep. And the the 6-string the I've had, my brother bought it for me in college, and that thing's oh. like an old friend to me. So That's neat. Uh, but uh, my electric guitar that I had was a Kramer. Oh and yeah, my brother gave it to me, um, and and before the guy who owned it before him was some guy in a local band, um, but I ended up um, th there's a a student that and his family that I've known for for quite a few years, and he started taking guitar lessons, and the kid is phenomenal. Wow. I mean, it came to a point where like, can I play with you? Yeah, and, and so we played, and, you know, I'm better than him, which is pretty bad. But, you know, he's taking lessons, and he's really taking to it. Now, I mean, the kid just soars above me. There's no way I'd play with the kid now. But, uh, but so I had this Kramer, and it was another one of those things where it's like, it's just sitting there. You know, I never play it, um, and I, I, I gave it to him. And um, I think he's going to go far with it. That's but, neat. Uh, it was really cool because I, I brought it over to their house, and uh, – we we played kind of a trick on him because I he wanted to play electric guitar and I strapped it on him and everything. I kept saying, you know, be careful with my guitar. Be careful with my guitar. And then we had this planned. At some point, I switched it over to, hey, be careful with your guitar. Be careful oh, with your guitar. Wow. And he, he never picked up on it. The kid oh. never picked up on it. <laughs> yeah. And we just had to basically tell him, yeah, this is yours now. Take care of it. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, and my brother's going to kick my ass when he finds out that I, that I get that <laughs> yeah. to a fourth grader, fifth grader wow. now. But, um, you know, what what good is something just to sit in a closet? Get yeah, a I something. agree. So, all right. So, Kurt, are you ready to um, partake in our, our Flick Fandango phony? Sure. <laughs> okay, we've got music for it this time. Oh, we do have music. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Okay, here, I'm going to play the little intro. All right. You're a Flick Fandango phony. Mm -hmm. I have to call out bullshit when I see it. 
Yep. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. Number one. Here's to you, Mel Smoking Dress. I have no idea what that what that username means. From Twitter, who said, and I quote. I'm well aware that the cars aren't crazy talented like some of the other bands I listen to, but they are fun. <laughs> You're that's a that's like backwards. Fandango phony. Wow. <laughs> I didn't comment on that one on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yep. Number two, here's to you, Joey Hastings, Amazon review guru, whose review says, and once again, I quote, I had enough of the cars for the moment. I hear them on every radio station in the world. So the guy's obviously well traveled. <laughs> and the only album they play is songs from this. And he's talking, he's reviewing the debut album. Another album they play is their second album, which is really lame. Plus, they ain't that good. The singer just sings. This cars isn't music. This is just noise. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you say Amazon troll? Holy crap, dude. <laughs> you're a flick fandango phony. Or yeah, or you're that. ten. What Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> now, here's my last one. And yeah. and I have to admit, I, I don't get um uh amazed very often by things that I see on the internet. <laughs> but this one blew me away. Remember the, the rock and roll polls guy who went from Went from zero to gay rapist in like one tweet. Yes. Remember that guy? Yes. Okay. This is like the female version of him. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this popped up on Twitter and it is um, a girl named uh, whose screen name is Alt Rock Chick. Okay. And she has a blog called, uh, I don't, I, you know what? I'm not even going to say the name of her blog because it would be giving her free advertising. Okay. And we are. High plus place, but <laughs> yeah, I read this album review for the, for the debut album, and I couldn't tell if it was a, an album review or some kind of Pornhub intro. Really, right? it is so bad, and so I'm going to attempt to read this to give you a, the gist of of what she wrote. It says the cars remind me of the guy who begins to do that kind of thing with lots of promise, but then it pulls back at exactly the wrong moment, forcing you to resort to finish the job yourself. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> okay. David. That's, that's the, ta that's the tamest part of this review. It, wow. it's, it is bad. Wow. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. I can't uh, even I so bad. The, it says the move. I'm I'm omitting words as I read this. The move that falls flat, or a dumbass technique he read somewhere about some some guaranteed way to make a girl. Blah blah. I that's all I can do. Anyway, she is a major flick fandango phony. Wow. And and I I did respond to her on Twitter. I I said that exact same thing. I couldn't tell if this was an al album review or an intro to Pornhub. <laughs> and I got no response from whatsoever. But I mean, it is vile. It is wow. just vile. It gets worse. Long ago. So, so essentially, she is she is using um, uh, sexual. Uh, oh no, that's what I, I uh, tweeted to her. I said, "I get it. You don't like the album, and you're sexually frustrated." She's oh, wow. using her sexual frustration to compare the Cars debut album to. Wow. Or guys or something. It, it's just nuts. That sounds that like crazy. funk after death to me. That's it is funk after like. death. And she yeah. is a major flick fandango phony. Wow. Agreed. Yikes. There, there is so much. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> there is so much out there. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not actively um, you know, addressing yes. these people. I just figure I'll just put it in the podcast. Yeah. And that way I, I don't I don't get people like the Classic rock polls guy. <laughs> yeah, going off on you. With his junk. <laughs> there you go. Gosh. <laughs> I got threatened with his junk. <laughs> Holy cow! That was crazy when that happened. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, Kurt, have you have you ever considered writing an email in to for the Midnight Scroll? Uh, I guess I haven't. I listen enough, but I, I just I haven't. 
Well, you can't now because you've been on. Okay, but, but <laughs> You're <I'm clear>. exempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're exempt now. But we, we, we do have something for the Midnight Scroll, Donna. Oh, boy. So you want to roll that beautiful Midnight Scroll. I do. Here we go. All right, let her rip. All right, here we go. Now, this is from, it's going to be hard to pronounce, I think. This comes from someone named, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. Ar, Araba Sevgil Isi. Araba Sel, Sevgil Isi Dave. is the name. What? <laughs> you know what? Oh. Good day. Good day, Bay Steel Wool and Bay and Sunshine Rainbows. Bay? As you know. Wait, wait, did you Turks say Bay? Yeah. <laughs> Turks love the cars. Oh, boy. Our country is in the middle of uh, the cars renaissance. We love the new wave artistry of these famous American musicians. <laughs> we have technology to download all of their famous songs from Turkish Apple iTunes. <laughs> and I enjoy them very much. <laughs> I enjoy them very much. I enjoy them very much. We have one problem, though. Many of the songs written by Rick Kasek, or as we like to call him, oh, God, it's another, it's another Turkish name, Burku Sivan, which translates sweet-smelling handsome man. <laughs> David. The songs do not translate well into our language. <laughs> <laughs> For example. No. Give me some. What? Can I, can I finish? I'm trying to read here, Debbie. For example, give me some slack translates to give a little laxity. Is this song about apathy? I don't understand. Touch and go translates tap and go. A song about riding an elevator? So strange. You're all I've got tonight translates to the only person I have tonight is this old shepherd woman. <laughs> we are not that desperate in my country. <laughs> Dangerous type translate in, translates into that gentleman has a grenade. Run! <laughs> and shooby do, shooby do simply translates to damn. <laughs> The only song that translates well is Tata Weo Weo, which in the Turkish language means Tata Weo Weo. <laughs> I invite all our fellow fanatics of the cars to greet our native people with Tata Weo Weo. Oh should my you gosh. visit our country, please do not bring up the dangerous type song. <laughs> we'll be arrested. In World New Wave Peace, Araba Sevgi Isi. Oh. <laughs> You have okay. sunk let me, to let, a new Let me low. guess, sir. I see a pattern here. <clears throat> uh, I wonder if that was Turks, Turks love real us. or not. I just don't know. Turks love hey, as the Turks say, Bak Yatman Lazin, <laughs> which means I make shit up. <laughs> that is, oh. Google Translate was a big thing for me this week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Dave. <laughs> You have what? sunk hey. to a new low. The moral of the story <laughs> is, you people don't write in, I make shit up. People, I am begging you. Begging you with all my heart. Please, just send anything. Just anything has got to be better than hearing a letter from a fake Turk. <laughs> Should we... <laughs> give, me, Should... give me something, people. Help me out. Shooby do, damn! <laughs> you know I'm gonna think of that every time I hear that song now. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when... <laughs> what the hell? All right, All right. So there we go. There's our 22nd episode, folks. All right, it's in the can. Kurt, yeah. I'm so glad you joined us. What a blast! And I'm glad I did too. Thanks for sharing all your stories and oh, just so fun to get that inside information and just to hear, well, just to get to know you better. I know that people are going to love to get to know you better by listening to this podcast. 
Yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to do, and uh, I, I um, would like to do this again sometime. So hopefully we can maybe meet at the Hall of Fame induction. Maybe if Dave can swing it, pick him up on the way, and uh, meet some more Cars fans and, and have a lot of fun and do this again. Definitely. <laughs> so, um, Kurt, uh, people can I guess they can they can find you um, in the different uh, pages on Facebook. Yep. Uh, Including ours on the on the uh, Night Thoughts podcast page. Yes, Donna, I I I don't want to fail to ask. Wh- where can people find you? <laughs> well, I write a blog about Benjamin Orr and the cars. It's at uh, www.sweetpurplejune.wordpress.com. Right? That wordpress.org. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Close you, think I, you think I'd know it by now, but no. I, yeah. I can't believe I just totally blanked on it. Um, <clears throat> because how many times do I say it? Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look it up. It's uh, <laughs> www. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> dot sweetpurplejune.wordpress.com, people. And then also please okay. find me on Twitter at sweetpurplejune. Oh, and I have a yeah. Facebook page um, that goes with my blog. It's Benjamin Orr, colon, Sweet Purple June. So come find me there. All right. And, of course, you can find me on Twitter. Don't be afraid of Twitter, people. (laughs) Kurt's come over to Twitter. He never twits or tweets, (laughs) but he's on Twitter. (laughs) You're going to show me, and then I'll do more. He is a follower. I follow him. And uh, I'm there at at night underscore spots. So you can find me there. All right. So there we go. Episode 22 in the can. Thank you for listening, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Thanks, guys. See you.